This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. Red Hot Comic Book Movie News. Shooting up your butthole. The Weekly Planet. The Weekly Planet. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday, but with me as always this week... Um, <laughs> He's joining. He's back in the studio. It's great to be back. Due to popular demand, uh, it's isn't great. it, Mason? <laughs> I'm here. It's great to be here. What's going on? Uh, have you we... been on some podcasts by any chance? I have been on at least one podcast. What have you been up to? I was on. Tell me all your secrets. Sam <laughs> Peterson's podcast, Confessions of the Idiots. Oh, ah, okay. Reteamed with Alastair Tremblay Virtual. What a delightful team um, up. Two in the Think Tank. And a delightful show. It's very delightful. Mm. We had a, have a good time. It's very, it's very silly. Uh, Sammy reads out some confessions from uh, idiots, if you will, from yes. from Reddit and and various other places, and we try to give them advice, but it's not it's bad advice. Yeah, and it's also just bad situations all around, isn't it? Yeah, and often the the situation was long ago, and <laughs> That's it cannot right. and it cannot be resolved. We cannot help them anymore, <laughs> so we make fun of those poor unfortunate souls. Funny you should say that, Mason. I was on a podcast that's going to be out Tuesday, another episode of Faux Fop with Ooh. Charlie Clawson. Mm-hmm. Uh, so basically we just talk about a bunch of stuff. We talk about Hey Hey It's Saturday. Of course. We talk about fitness. Yes. We talk about uh, being a parent. We talk about things we hate, just people we hate. Terrific. We, li- we take it in turns to list people we hate. <laughs> Terrific. That Real part. names, no holds barred. Real names, that's real addresses, phone numbers, and we even uh, named the phone number. We even gave international Oh, but, dialing prefixes, that's yeah. good. That's handy, actually. So Because I don't want to be like, I don't want to be listening to a podcast yeah. of somebody I like and they're like, hey, here's somebody I really hate and you should harass them. Here's a phone number. And then I have to go, okay, but what country do they live yeah. in? Yeah. What does that to, mean? What does that mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To yeah. punch into my, does my service provider even do this? Can I do it through WhatsApp? Do they have WhatsApp? Mm. Great questions. These are all great questions. And yeah. speaking of Alistair Trombley Virtual, I just thought I'd give him a plug for well, James. Well, James, we're not getting anything out of this. What? But if you if you were in Melbourne and you are listening to this when it comes out, mm. Al and Andy are doing a show they did recent, a live show. They're taping it. It's called yeah. Teleport. It's very funny. It's about two stupid men yeah. who are trying to build a teleportation device. Um, and it's this week, and they would like people to be in the audience. And it's Wonderful! The, it's the twenty third, the twenty fifth, and the twenty seventh of February. So if you want to go, if you want to get, if you want to, if you want to get tickets, you go to melbournefringe.com.au and you you type teleport in. Search for teleport. Always a good time. Always mm. really funny. Always really clever as well. Clever and, and dumb. And dumb. Clever and dumb. <laughs> it's really really great. Mm. And then also you might be like, yeah, but whatever. They're also professional TV writers, just That's heads true. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So not year whatever. Yeah. You can keep your year whatever. And also, we'll be there. We'll be there every underst- night. We're their understudies. <laughs> so if they get poisoned, yeah. we're going to go in. If we, we poison them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we haven't read the script. <laughs> no, 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 we don't need to. Yeah, well, I mean, we saw it once, like last year or something. Yeah, exactly. So, so yeah. it's absolutely going to be fine. Mason, big week, though. Yes. Uh, we had, well, I'm just going to give you the topic. Okay, great. And then if people want to use time codes because we're all calling to... Uh, edits that I was gonna say deletes these. I hope he doesn't. I hope these are going up. <laughs> what if he's deleting them every week? One day he will. <laughs> One day he will. But uh, he puts time codes below if you do want to jump to any particular section. We've got the death of a, a, a movie legend. We've got Stranger Things news. We've got more Oscar news. We've got uh, Fra- another another old crank being angry at Marvel. Oh, have... is it this? Oh, is it? Oh, is it? Is it? Is it uh, FFC? It is. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, we've got video game news. We've got Star Trek news. We've got yeah. a new Doctor Strange trailer, mm-hmm. which came out uh, like a day after we recorded last week. Plus trailers for Lord of the Rings, Chip and Dale. Uh, some Looney Tunes news. Some. Uh, we're going to review Peacemaker. Yep. And then we're going to review Uncharted. That's right. And then we're going to review Snake Eyes. Mm-hmm. And then we'll move on from there to various points of the That's show. Right. God, it's been wild since we've done a. You know the. the... The old hat trick, three reviews. Three reviews. You know, in one, but we can do it, I think. Reviews. I think we can do it. We will not run out of steam. Nah, we never have and we mm-hmm. never will. That's right. <sighs> James, did you just run out of steam? Yeah, and sad news, Mason, two things. Oh, okay, right, right. <laughs> so Ivan Reitman, mm. seemingly out of the blue, uh, passed away at age 75. Yeah, right. So people would know him from Director of Stripes, uh, two of the Ghostbusters mm-hmm. movies, including the best one by far, uh, Twins, Kindergarten Cop, the much underrated evolution, I feel. Oh, of course, yeah. From, uh, the spiritual sequel to Ghostbusters. That's right, yeah. Um, also, he was very much involved on the Ghostbusters 2016 reboot, reboot, and more so even the 2021 version, which is yeah, right, right, right. directed. I think he even stood in for Harold Ramis. For, he did, yeah, for yeah. Certain uh, is that a spoiler? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Ooh, I mean, uh, yes, uh, yeah. 
but but it's been out a while, hasn't it? Yeah, now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone who is going to see that movie has seen. Yeah, it. Yeah, I'd imagine so. But also, uh, Harold Ramis, uh, uh, Egon's in the trailer. Well, that's true. About, oh yeah, that's he's really running about in those cornfields. Yeah. But like, he's produced numerous other projects, like yeah. a movie making legend, like a huge icon of the eighties, and he kind of kept doing good work, like right up to his death. And that's it's true. seemingly like there's no cause of death at this point, but apparently he did die in his sleep, which is. Small blessings. Mm-hmm. 75, boo. That's too early. I don't like that. Mm. Should have been 110, and then I would have gone good. But, you know, <laughs> that's what I would have said. Wow. Good run, and that's enough. You've had enough. You've had enough. 111 is too much. <laughs> yeah. So Only Bilbo Baggins gets to be 11, 11 <laughs> That's right. And that's it. Yeah. So look, and those and those <laughs> those people in Russia or whoever who lie about their age, and they're like, I'm 113 years old. Yeah. Like, you're also 75, mm. yeah. But, look, I know, like, Ghostbusters is one of, if not your favourite movie of all yeah, time, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I know he's obviously had an impact on, you know, your life and just – it just sucks we can't get something else, anything else from him at this point, That's you know true. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But what a, what yeah, a legacy, it, well, though. it's true, and it's, it's also like, it. you know, he never had – he didn't have a legacy of, like – he made a couple of good ones and then it was all diminishing returns and it's yeah. like Ivan Reitman's new film and you're like, no, this is going to be bad, but... Yeah, no. exactly. Let's give all, it a go. You know, yeah, yeah. So, look, um, again, seems like a very nice guy. Mm-hmm. Made a lot of great stuff. If only we could all... I wish I was either of those things, but I'm not. I'm a bad guy and I've never made anything good. <laughs> Moving on, basis. Okay. <laughs> James, James, it's so hard on yourself. Sometimes you're an okay guy. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah. Stranger Things Season 4. Yeah. I know you're They jazzed. go to Russia. They do. Speaking they of Russia, to Russia, they're going to meet some of those 113-year-old men and women. <laughs> Shake them down to see yeah. if it's true. That's right. Uh, <laughs> they, they were gonna be, it's going to be split into two parts, <laughs> one on May 27th of this year and <laughs> then July 1st, which I think is – I think Netflix are not completely moving away, but they're getting hit by the streaming everything at once model. Yeah, people, people are they're, getting tired of the business. Their shows don't stay around. Yeah, like, they don't, know, they don't make an impact yearly, culturally, yeah. Like, we'll talk about it later, but Peacemaker was able to build and build every week. Yes. And, you know, there might be like a squid game where everybody talks about it for like a while, mm. but most things are just like that. When did that happen? Yeah. Space Force came out again, season two. Yes, it did. It came out on Friday. Another season of Tiger King, maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe there's didn't one. They, didn't they get all the didn't they didn't everyone end up in jail or dead? Didn't that... Nah, some of the tigers got loose. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. <laughs> Wait for that other guy's arm or whatever who lost mm. the arm. I can't yeah. remember. Somebody lost an arm in that. Yeah. Maybe a lot of people lost their arms. So yeah, there you go. And also on top of that, it's going to end with season five. Oh. Which I think is good. Probably. Because wise. like, you know. Put a cap on it. Do you reckon? And they'll... then come back into it in, in ten years. Yeah, yeah. Do you think they'll have another crack at Which the, the, the spin-off? You know, the other the Eleven's friends. No. Okay. They might set up something else, but yeah. name any of those characters. Name uh, what they look like. Eight. Name any of their powers. Four. Oh, okay. Seismic powers. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Okay, there you go. No, well. I don't think they will. <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, there you go. Uh, so presumably next yeah. year will be season five, but mm. who knows? Stranger Things, it, you know, it's got a weird release schedule and. Depending on how old everybody gets, yeah, yeah. You know, how about just spin off and it's just like grotty eighties mall kids. Grotty eighties. They don't mall have any kids. powers. They just Bummer, mate. yeah, yeah. Just being grotty at the just mall. putting chewing gum under seats. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Gross. And sometimes getting retrieving chewing gum from oh, seats and eating chewing that. gum. Yeah. I hate that, Mason. Mm-hmm. Here's something I love though. Go on. Do you love the Oscars? No. Okay. Here's something neither of us love. But okay. Terrific. It's what well, you were lying. I was lying. This wow. I do kind of love because I want to see how <laughs> badly it goes. Eventually, maybe not this year. Oh, James, I'll stop you right there. Yes. I don't know what you're talking about yet, but it is, some, is it something to do with the public? Yes, it yeah, is. Yeah, of course it is, yeah. <laughs> so, it, yeah. Hey, you, the Oscars, if you're listening, you're not. Don't do anything with the public. Don't yeah. let the public decide anything. Leave us alone. We the public. And leave us a like, <laughs> yeah. but leave us alone. Yeah, primarily. that's right. Um, so they are moving forward with a fan favorite Oscar category. Oh, no. Right. So I know there's been a lot of people in the industry. Apparently, I saw a headline that was like, Oprah doesn't like it. Like this either or whatever, but like, okay, <laughs> if that's true, I just read that headline. Maybe she That was about eggs. Oh, was it? Oprah doesn't like it like this either. What do you mean she doesn't like eggs? I don't know. Is that true? I don't know. That's crazy because even if you don't like eggs, I feel like there is a way that you could prepare an egg where someone would like it, you know? Yeah, sure. Do you like eggs? Yes. You're okay then. Yeah. Is there a way you don't like eggs? Nope. Love them. You know that scene in the uh, Lord of the Rings? Yeah. Are they talking about eggs? I think it's potatoes. Whatever. Yeah. But, <laughs> Sub them in, I don't care. You want mashed eggs? I want French fried eggs. You want yeah. mashed eggs? Mashed eggs, please, yes. <laughs> okay, great. Terrific. Yeah. Can't open an egg, fill it with bacon bits. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll do that. And, uh, yeah. I do like a boiled egg, Mason. Mm. There's something about it. Yeah. Iggy and soldiers. 
<laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, what are we talking about? I've forgotten. No. Eggs. No. Spy- the so, Oscars. So if it's fan favorite and it's going to be like the Marvel 2021 movies. release, it will probably be Spider-Man because also yeah. there was – I think that was also part mm. of the reason why this is happening. Also, the Snyder fans are upset for a number of reasons this week, but one of the reasons is that um, the just, Justice, Zack Snyder's Justice League cannot be nominated because it did not get a cinematic release. Oh, there yeah. wasn't a cinema tall enough for that aspect ratio. That's right. So they just couldn't do it. I mm. know uh, that's not the reason, but um, that did happen. Did that come out last year or did that come out a million years ago? I don't know. There's no yeah. way of knowing, honestly. Who's to say? Mm. But if you do want to um, contribute, you can actually hashtag Oscar fan favourite and get your votes in before March 3rd. That's how they're doing it? That's how, but partially. There might be, maybe you can also vote through TV Week, Australia's own. But um, that's, <laughs> Clip that coupon in TV Week. Yeah. But that's, in, surely wouldn't an army of bots, how, how yes. are they, they going to? Yes. See, my first thought was, when yeah. I saw this, was like, how can I ruin this? Mm, how sure. How can I, like, but yeah, yeah. I'm not. But also, somebody, somebody much better than me I was is gonna already say, ruining it. I was going to say this, so there'd be, <laughs> if we've thought of it, there's just the there's the it's already the, emotion on the on the internet. There are people whose whole deal is just ruining things, yeah. And they they're already they, this is their moment. They've planned for this already. Oh, absolutely. This is like those pre-written obituaries. It's a guy who's like, mm. if if the Oscars ever introduce this, yeah. voting via hashtags, I'm I'm ready to ruin this. I feel like the Oscars would also be like, we're just doing the one that we think as well. Because my yeah, my first no, thought would be pick something like ridiculous. Mm. Or like even an okay movie would be pretty funny. They'll, you know what I mean? Oh, you want you want you want the uh, you want to you want the internet to like grab yeah. on to. Yeah. but I think be Halloween or whatever. Yeah, I think they. Well, that was streaming, Mason. Get it together. <laughs> you weren't, obviously weren't listening to the rules. Uh, like, no, <laughs> I was listening to the rules. I opened up a backyard cinema <laughs> <laughs> and I screened it once and now and it counts. <laughs> okay, fair enough. You went above and beyond. Yeah, but I I just don't think they would. Yeah, you know what I mean. And, you know, but are they a hundred percent decided they're going to do this via hashtagging? That, 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 yes. Because how are they going to factor in typos? You can you can factor you can vote like multiple times a day, I believe, as well. How are they going to factor in like bots? As we said, yeah. How are they going to? What's going to happen is as soon as the as soon as the result comes out and it's Spider Man No Way Home, mm. there's going to just be. So many viral threads and videos and of just people going. Well, actually, I did a, I did a, well, uh, that is true. I did a regression formula on this yeah. on the on all the on the hashtags and whatnot. And I found it actually wasn't Spider Man yeah. No Way Home. But I guess maybe that gets more eyes on. Yeah, on uh, on the. Well, Oscars. that's true. Exactly, and I also think that. It will probably be Spider Man this year, <laughs> yes. but if they do it next year, it's mm. going to give people a year to think. Think hard. You know what I mean? How to ruin this? How to ruin it? Mm. Maybe we'll come up with something. Yeah, but look, honestly, I don't have it in me. It's- and I also <laughs> wonder if they're. I was. I also wonder, you know, because they're the Oscars. There, it's 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 a bunch of old dudes. Yeah. Do you think they're prepared for this? Do you think they're prepared for the levels of chicanery and and? Do you think they've they just probably got- have a social media team? Yeah, but I don't know if they're ready either. Yeah. I don't know. They're going to be like, oh, wow, with an unprecedented 500 million yeah. votes, it's Spider-Man No Way Home or whatever. And it's also, like, like, we would, you'd be able to figure it out before the event happens. Yeah. Have we, so there's a, there's a. Like anybody could. Yeah. You could just no. search. Oh, like search before, that. before it's announced yeah. on, maybe they won't even announce it on TV. Mm. Maybe we like the technical Oscars. Oh, boo. Yeah. Technical. Don't even bother. <laughs> That's right. You put in a lot of effort. Pfft, no, yeah, thank you. No, thank you. Oh, yeah. no. You're not Leonardo DiCaprio. We Spe- don't care. Special effects so good, I didn't even know a special effect was happening. No, thank you. Uh, sound editing. Yeah. Pfft, doesn't it just edit itself? The, on, the, only, the only special effects I like are the special effects that are just right down the absolute fine line of I know that they're happening, but they're not out of place even slightly. <laughs> that's where I, that's that's the that's that's where we're at. That's the exactly. gold that's the golden spot. If it's unnoticeable, what not a real special Forget effect. Forget it. Yeah. Forget it. Mm. Also, I want little fun skits at the Oscars. I think it's three hosts this year. I can't remember who. Billy Crystal. Yep. Michael Keaton. Yep. One of Michael Keaton's clones from Multiplicity. Wow. Yeah. Which one? The one that got hit in the head? Yeah, the bad one. The real <laughs> oh, one. No. <laughs> the one where they clone too far and he's all, ugh. You know, he's that a clone of a clone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Anyways, time for another edition of Hey, I'm a beloved movie director and fuck Marvel. That famous segment <laughs> of the love show. I love it. I love it. This week, it's Francis Ford Coppola who spoke mm. to GQ. Yeah, I call him. Frickin' fish and chips. Why do you call that? FFC. Yeah, but like people wouldn't know what you're saying. No, I know. I know. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. It's in only in my head, all Have right? Have you seen Frickin' Fish and Chips' latest? <laughs> I don't know. What, what is his latest? I don't know. <laughs> isn't he, isn't he going to, 
I think he's. I'm going to talk about his next project. He's going to fund something. I'm going to get to that he's, with I'm his gonna, own money. All right, yeah, go I'm ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is what he said. There used to be studio films. Now there are Marvel pictures. And what's in a Marvel picture? Uh, a Marvel picture is one prototype movie that is made over and over and over and over and over again to look different. Even the talented people. So that's also like that criticism. I don't think is like completely invalid. I sure. think a lot of comic book movies or blockbuster movies do feel very similar. We even watched one this week that we, we will talk about. Oh yeah, you forgot. Mason. I forgot. I've been forgetting throughout the week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but he says, even the talented people, you could take Dune, made by Denis Villeneuve, mm. an extremely talented, gifted artist, and you could take No Time to Die, directed by Kari Afukanaga, extremely gifted, talented, and beautiful artist, and you could take both of those movies. Oh, he's beautiful. And you, I've actually never seen him. He's pretty good. He's All pretty right. good looking. All right. Yeah, nice. and, I, <laughs> and you and I uh, could go and pull the same sequence out of both of them and put them together. The same sequence where the cars all crash into each other. You know, that famous sequence in Dune <laughs> when all the cars yeah. crash into each other. <laughs> the sand cars. <laughs> yeah. They all have, all have the stuff in it, and they, and they almost have, have to have it if they're going to justify a budget, and that's good films, and that's, and that's good films and talented filmmakers. What are you talking about, Fish and Chips? <laughs> what are you even talking about? What yeah. cars? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess... I think that tapered off a little bit. I, yeah. think, I think maybe he... He had a bit of hate and then he... <laughs> yeah, I don't know if... He is 80. But, well, he is 80, but also every time one of these comes out, I absolutely feel like... Whoever it is is being baited into saying something. He's eighty two. Yeah, it's it's someone. It's always it's always an interviewer. I think, and again, maybe, maybe I'm wrong here, but it always feels like yeah. some interviewer being like, "I'm going to get one of these old school in guys, and I'm going to say, ask them what they think about Marvel stuff." Yeah, and I'm going to bait them into saying something mean, and then people then will go to our article. Yeah, 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 exactly. So yeah, it's it's interesting because like he hasn't like he's obviously oh, look. I'll preface this by saying. Mm-hmm. He's made, like, incredible movies. He's yeah. obviously a, an incredible director. And I'd imagine that the kind of movies that he made, maybe he's not, you know, he's, they're not the biggest movies in the world anymore. Whereas, like, no. a Godfather or a Godfather 2 or even the movie Jack, for example, yeah. you know, they they would go, like, they would be some of the biggest, like, highest grossing movies of that year. Yeah, yeah. Whereas that's not really, like, the case anymore. Yeah. And, you know, I could see, how you know, that would be frustrated, but that frustrating, but that comparison between, like, June and No Time to Die. Like, yeah. I, I, no. <laughs> also, I still think they make movies that are as good as like a Godfather or Jack, but sure. they're, not, they're not the biggest, but they still exist. That's true, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I can't think of one off the top of my head. No one can. Because I, I can only think of Marvel movies. <laughs> right now I'm only thinking, I'm thinking of three Spider-Men together. <laughs> they're having a conversation. They're, they're doing science. One's cracking the other guy's back. It's incredible. <laughs> I'm loving it. Patrick Willems actually has two videos about Francis Ford Coppola. Yes. So if you want to learn about Francis Ford Coppola, how Francis Ford Coppola almost revolutionized Hollywood and, yeah, I have seen that one. and really what good. happened what happened to Francis Ford Coppola. Mm. So yeah, I mean he was sort of a um he was sort of a George Lucas contemporary in a lot of like He was, except, They sort of came up in the same Except he didn't make Star Wars. And I don't mean yeah. that as an insult. Yeah. I mean like he never got four billion dollars. <laughs> no, exactly. Like it, it's what's interesting about him is they both sort of came out of this school of like, we're gonna do experimental mm. things. But George Lucas's first experimental thing was a 1950s throwback sci-fi action. Yeah. I mean, thing. he did like yeah, he did American Graffiti, Graffiti, yeah. And whatever, but like one but yes. of his early ones was this thing that just suddenly became his whole world forever. Yeah. And Francis Ford Coppola didn't get that, like you said, and, yeah. and he just sort of attempted a bunch of things, a lot of which was very kind of creatively uh, good. Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. Creatively good. <laughs> yeah. But not not necessarily financially successful. Yeah. Like, and, and a lot of stuff lost money, I think. Yeah, absolutely. But apparently not. Like, he's still doing all right. I don't know when you're going to get to that Francis Ford Coppola news. I'll do it about... right now. Okay. So basically. Um, <laughs> Based on the figure that I think I remember him saying. He's got a, he's got, so he basically wants to get to his, his own movie off the ground, which he's been trying to do for a couple of decades now. It's called uh, Megalopolis. Okay. It's a story about the aftermath and reconstruction of New York City after a mega disaster. Ah, it's, it was, is it Akira? It's Akira. It's Akira, but set in America. It's the sequel to Akira. Oh! The, isn't there a big explosion at the end of Akira? There is. I say knowing that as a big fan who mm. definitely has seen it because sure, I know sure, everything sure, about sure. anime. Mm. And, um, but basically, uh, he, did, he was going to do it around the year 2000, but 9-11 happened. And, yeah, right. And then you couldn't do anything <laughs> sure. remotely resembling that uh, for a while. But it's, it's going to cost $120 million dollars. If he does it, and he's going to, but that's and, and that's his money. He's going to pay for it himself. His net worth, Forbes says, his net worth is four hundred million dollars. Wow! And I would say, with good investment, it's 
probably more. If oh, he you, also has that wine company. He's got, the wine he's, company got a, he's got a wine company. Whatever, I yeah. forgot. Yeah. Yeah. But like he's, if he was smart about it, which he probably is, and he has like a, and he made up like, a lot of money in the 70s and 80s, and you could just sit on that and, yeah. you know, if you're yeah. smart with it, he's probably... I mean, $400 million, dollars, he probably wrote an article for the New York Times about filmmaking or something like that, and he's paid him $400 million. <laughs> yeah, that's right, he still gets residuals. Yeah. So, yeah, look, I would love to see that. Yeah. Let's fucking... I mean, I, I have my doubts that he will do it. Yeah, yeah. Because he hasn't been doing it, mm. and not to say that, you know, he won't, but maybe this is like this is like the kick in the pants. I maybe mean, he's, this is him letting people know that, no, I am going to do this. Yeah, you know what he could do? He could say that he's going to do a Last Jedi remake, and he could crowdfund it, <laughs> and then once he's got a billion dollars, <laughs> yeah. just make a Megalopolis, and then make, make, make Last Jedi on the side, you yeah. know? Yeah, or don't. Yo, don't do it. Just keep the money. Yeah. Because that's how Indiegogo works or whatever. You just keep the money, I think. Yeah. Uh-huh. I think that's how it works. So there you go. Anyways, uh, that's another edition of um, a guy that's actually a really good filmmaker but doesn't like some Marvel movies. Mm. And by Marvel movies, they just mean movies. <laughs> I think they do, yeah. I think that's the... For, yeah. I mean, it's the... It's, you know... Because of blockbusters, yeah. the Marvel ones are, generally speaking, much better than... Most others, sure. I would say of like the very mainstream. Stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. true. There's a you know, there's a there's a produ- there's certainly a production quality guarantee, and mm. there's a kind of you know, they they want all the pieces in place correctly. Yeah, and even though that's just for continuity for the sake of the next movie. Yeah, it, you know, they well, mostly work. That's the only reason I watch anything. <laughs> so, as long as it lines up with the previous thing. Mm, absolutely. Speaking of Mason. Go on. No, not really. Okay. Listen, uh, listen, um, <laughs> video games, anyone? New segment. Uh-oh, all and, right. And then you say bing. Like beep, a, boop, boop, yeah, boop, 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 boop. What game's that? Mario. Which one? The one where he's sad. Remember that one? Sad Mario. Is it, oh. is it paint? Yeah, it's, it's paint. <laughs> I'm not a painter, I'm a plumber. Oh. That's my Mario voice. <laughs> I can, I'm, ne- I'm never as good. I'm never as Luigi better. At the... <sighs> I stepped in this tray of paint. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. I was going to do a thing about how he's like, oh, my God, I got the imposter syndrome. I don't know. I'm never. People say, Murray, you're saving a princess. But I'm like, oh, yeah, but I can't, I can't draw a picture of the princess. And, no. right. But you're just like he stepped in a tray of paint, which I think is funny. <laughs> you know, like could you pour the, the paint out into like a roll? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, and he yeah. steps in it because he yeah. couldn't get his foot in a Oh, is he just, is this, is this Mario paint just Mario like paints the room? Yeah. He just paints just the room. doing, doing renos. <laughs> okay, great. What are we talking about? Oh, yeah, video games. Video game news. Okay, great. A few things. Um, Sonic, sad Mario Paint. Sad Mario Paint. <laughs> so Sonic 3 is moving ahead. The movie? Yeah, I think it's going to be out next year even. Okay. Plus a Knuckles spin-off TV series on Whoa. maybe Paramount Plus. HBO which, Max. Very, oh, sexy. Mm. I think Idris Elba is back as well. Oh, great. Knuckles in the show. Okay. And on top of that, after <laughs> Yeah, because ye- at the end of filming Sonic 2, they would have just been like, Here's some more lines. Yeah, just say this. Here's a series worth of lines. You want to say those? Say, so get ready, it's a kidna time, yeah. or whatever, whatever Knuckles says. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get ready, it's a kidna time. Uh, also, there is a Bioshock. Having a kidna sandwich, he would say. <laughs> also, there is a Bioshock. <laughs> does that mean? Like, as opposed to like a knuckle sandwich. As opposed to a knuckle sandwich. Oh, that's good. Right? He could say knuckle sandwich. That's what I'm saying, but he but wouldn't. Why doesn't he say that? Because he's an echidna or something. <laughs> so he's like, get some of this. I want to give you an echidna sandwich. Yeah, his name is History Knuckles. will prove me right, James. No. This is a funnier bit. <laughs> the listeners will, all right. I mean, we'll see. I yeah. just think, why would he change it? Like, he wouldn't. No, he would. Because you, if your, name was, no, if no, your name was Knuckles, you wouldn't say, here's a no, no, sandwich. But he, no, no, he wants, but he wants a signature line. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, fine. And people are too afraid of him yeah, to correct yeah. him because he'd punch them. Yeah. With his signature echidna sandwich. Do you think he's going to do his climbing up walls thing that he can do or whatever? Yes. Okay, cool. Anyways, Bioshock movie is in the works in Netflix, which I feel like went into development like 15 years ago sure, when that yeah. game came out. Yeah, in the 50s when I it was said. Who was the dude who was originally on it? He did that. He's, he's a, a French guy maybe. Luke, I want to say Luke Besson, but I don't think it's Luke Besson. I don't think it's Luke Besson. Yeah, but someone was going to do it. It's one of the guys who was on Gambit and left. Oh. Who was that? Which one, Mason? Don't know. It wasn't Rupert White. It was the other. It was another one. Oh, don't like Gore Verbinski. Gore Verbinski. I'm pretty sure Gore Verbinski was go- was going to do Bioshock at one point. Did he do one or more Pirates of the Caribbean movies? Yeah, probably. Okay. Which ones? Who knows? Some of them. Who knows? Yeah. Let's ask him. <laughs> let's do ask you have him, him on the line? Let's. A- yeah, I do. I've got him on the line. <laughs> Let's ask him that and let's ask him like a really loaded question about Marvel movies. Let's get another guy <laughs> offside. 
Let's get them real good. Really good stuff. Mm. Anyways, uh, we're speaking of Paramount, which we sort of were. And Bioshock. Yeah. I never played it. Like, I, I, I should have. And my <laughs> yeah. brother had it. Yeah. And he loved it. And I just never did. I played three. You, it'll be the one I don't like. The brother yeah. I don't like. Yeah, that's what yeah, I'm the one you don't like. Yeah. I played three. And yep. I don't even think I finished that. But it was good. Infinite. Yeah. Yeah. It was in, a, in the sky. Mm. Anyway, w- w- do you play them? Yeah. Which good. ones? Uh, one mm. and Infinite. Yeah. There was also a cancelled one for Vita. They were going to do a Vita oh. exclusive one. They never did. Boo, I say, <laughs> to the, the fact they didn't do that. Mm. Anyways. Should I hang up on Verbinski? Oh, yeah, fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for holding the line, but we don't. <laughs> he- hello. <laughs> hello. Look, I forgot. Look, I'm not interested anymore. I'm sorry. We can't get, we don't have time. Uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> this is my accent, I assume. <laughs> Maybe I'm Belgian. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't yeah. know. Uh, Paramount have somehow given the go ahead on Star Trek 4. Yeah, I saw that. And not just that. It's going to be in the Abrams universe. It's produced by J.J. Abrams. Uh, it's going to be directed by Matt Ch- uh, Shackman, who worked on WandaVision. Ah. And this is, Abrams said this. We'll be shooting by the end of this uh, end of the year. And we'll be featuring our original cast and some new characters that I think are going to be really fun and exciting and help take Star Trek into areas that you've never seen before. Whoa. So fuck you, Tarantino. Nobody wants your Star Trek <laughs> That's movie. That's right. That's right. That's kind of a shame. But also, I like this continuity. And by that, I mean I like two of the three movies that they made out of them. Mm. Last one was really good. Yeah. And the rumor was that it was going to be Chris Pine and Chris Hemsworth. That's right. And they should just do that. I think so Pay him the money Mm. and do it. Yeah. But we'll see. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. What do you think think, uh, Hemsworth would want for a Star Trek? $90 million? Nah. I think he'd probably do it for 15. 15 million? 10, All right. 15. Yeah, okay, probably sure, sure, closer sure. to 15. All right. Yeah. Nice. Because, you know, what luck to cast him initially. That's true. Now that he's famous, but also bad luck because you've got to pay him a lot <laughs> of money. That's true, yeah. And Chris Pine. If he wasn't. And Zoe Seldon. If like, he never became in, famous, they, yeah. they could have got him for a song. Everybody yeah. in the, that, those movies is famous. It's true. Now, for various reasons. Yeah. Like, Mostly Marvel related. Well, not. Well, John, uh, John Cho is like a famous director now. Oh. You know what I mean? They're all doing things. That's true. Unfortunately, of course, Anton Yelchin passed away, which along with us, yeah. sucks. Mm. But Do you think they'll recast or he's on a No, ship? I think he's out. I think they'll be, they'll yeah, be like, I he's think that it? would be. Don't. Please don't. Mm. Don't CGI him, please. Yeah. I think. And even like, you know, the boys is, you know, what's his name? He's in the boys. Now, Bones. What's his name? Bones is in the boys. Yeah, that guy. Uh, Jason it Donovan. Took, it took me two minutes to get Orson Welles, one of the most famous directors <laughs> in the world earlier. Two minutes. So, uh, Have you got Gore Verbinski on the line? We'll ask him. Uh, it turns out he's, uh, turn, yeah. Gore? Uh, who's the, uh, who's the, oh, it's Billy, it's Carl Urban. No, never Carl mind. Don't okay. worry. Put him on mute. <laughs> okay, but it turns out he's just American. Is he? I thought he was like. Um, I just, he looks French. Right? Yeah. I thought he'd be French or Belgian or something. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, uh, excited for Star Trek? He's from Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's amazing. I'm excited for Star Trek, yes. Me too. Mm. Let's see it. Maybe next year. Or maybe never because, you know. Yeah, sure. Sometimes these things don't happen. It's trailer's time. Trailers ahoy, everybody. <laughs> Should we talk about Doctor Strange first? Yes. And I have two videos on, videos on this, so I'm sick of it. What do you think? I'm loving it. I want to talk about it for an hour. I want to talk about it for an hour. Now, yeah, but people don't know your thoughts. No, that's true. So where you Okay, my, I guess my question to you, James, is... Uh, we, we saw a lot of, lot of revelations. I told you, in, I'm sick of it. I know, but I'm, I want your hot take on okay. it. Okay. What in the trailer do you think is an obvious misdirect or lie? Like, what have they seen? How many people out? are in those chairs? Yes. Yeah. And are, are they? So the the there's a for people who haven't seen this, which yep. is no one because it's been seen a billion times. Yep. Yep. Doctor Strange is brought into some sort of uh, dimensional. It looks like a, this huge sort of interdimensional palace, but there is just a bit of it that just looks like a regular like waiting room. Yeah. Which I think is cool by what look like to be Ultron bots, mm. and uh, he meets, he goes to a sort of a throne room and there are a bunch of seats and people, the assumption is that, that those seats are being filled by members of Marvel's Illuminati, which yeah. is various Marvel heroes who get together and like, and are like, we're going to, the universe is going to We're putting be the Hulk into space. Yeah, yeah, we're going to make the tough decisions that nobody yeah. else is going to make kind of thing. They're normally also from the same dimension. That's true. Whereas this case... Maybe if, it's if, if it is them, yeah. And yeah. so the 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 comic book ones, it's, it's Professor X yep. who is in this, but maybe he's well, not. Patrick Stewart's voice. It is Patrick Stewart's voice. And he was voice. like, he was interviewed this week, and it was like, it couldn't have been me because I was watching the Super Bowl. It couldn't have been me. <laughs> and I'm like, good stuff, Patrick Stewart. Never nice. change. Yeah, I was eating a hot dog. <laughs> 
<laughs> he's always he does seem surprised. With American by mustard <laughs> on it. Is that a worse kind of mustard? Would you feel? No, no. I get American mustard. Sure. Okay, well, it's, it's their own. Anyway, go on. And I washed it down with a Budweiser. Budweiser. <laughs> would say. You would say that, wouldn't you? Yeah. This is just that Martin Molloy sketch. I've I love that for... Martin Molloy sketch. Yeah, if yeah. anyone hasn't heard it, I've, have I ever brought this up? I don't think Every I have. Every time. No, we brought it up. Nah, fuck it. I'm bringing it up again. There's a Martin Molloy sketch from, I want to say, like 1994. It's a radio sketch. It's called The First Window. The First Window, and it's Patrick Stewart as himself ordering drive through Yes. And that's all you need to know going into it. Yeah. And maybe it's not very good, mm. but I think, and I and when I was a kid, I now thought, think it's the funniest thing that anyone's ever yeah. read. Yeah. Anyway, go on. Uh, so is it? But is it? Is it Professor X? Or I can still some... recite it. I won't. Yeah, but okay, go right. on. Uh, is it? Is it still Professor X, or is it somebody else? I think it's Professor. Because X. Because I guess the question, but be, so it's traditionally, it the, the, it's Professor X. It's uh, Mister Fantastic, Reed Richards, yep. Iron Man, Black, Black Panther, Panther, Black Bolt from oh, the yeah, Inhumans. That's Inhumans isn't it? Yeah, and yeah. I saw a thing on Facebook, which was almost certainly a lie, that said Anson Mount would be back as as yeah, the, Black Bolt in one this. of the videos. But, uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Black Panther. Black Panther. Did we mention him? Maybe we didn't. didn't. Yeah. But uh, so I guess the question becomes... Sometimes Beast? Is Beast being like I don't think so. Maybe I'm not. I don't think of just the X-Men. Name all the Submariners. Oh, yeah. He's bad Uh, news. So the question becomes, is this this the Illuminati as presented in the comic books or is this a different thing and we're all meant to be... Surprised and amazed by this situation. Another another thing that has, has arisen is... We see we see a, a being sort of in, f- surrounded by light and energy, and, the, and a lot of people have been like, "Is that Monica Rambeau from yes. from WandaVision? Or, or is it or is it uh, an alternate reality version of Tony Stark, specifically the superior Iron Man, who's like an evil Iron Man who went yeah. evil? Yeah, uh, but played by Tom Cruise. But played by Tom Cruise. Yeah. yeah, people people are just 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 hurling yeah theories at this at this one little glowing blob. I think it's I don't think it is him. Yes, like in that. Uh-huh. Image, yes. Um, but I think he could be in it. Yeah, and I don't know. Yeah, he could not be. But like, I think it's it's the kind of swing that like Marvel would take. Yes, you know. Yeah. And he'd he'd probably do it. Mm. And he was supposed to be Iron Man at some point. That's wasn't true. He? Yeah. So yeah, other, other like they've talked about. There's rumors of like Yoan Griffith returning mm, as sure. his version of Mister Fantastic or a version. Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh-huh. So I I just I don't know. Uh, I saw a quote here from. Um, Benedict Cumberbatch this week, who says, uh, we can bring our game to... Is that the- how he started it? Yeah. Uh, oh, I should have just stayed in theatre. Oh, yeah. God. It's I hate right. this week. I hate answering questions. <laughs> I hate working out. Oh, God. I hate waving my arms around in front of a green screen. Oh, fuck. I look so stupid. Okay, so the scene where I, I wake up out of bed and like the sheets come down, i got all my abs and whatever. Can, yeah, yeah, yeah. can I just stay under the sheets because I don't want to work out? <laughs> So I stand in the sheets. <laughs> can I be like, I don't want to, can, can my character be like, I don't want to, I just want to stay under the sheets and eat donuts. I remember that time in Sherlock when they did like the Matrix camera thing and I knew then that like I'm on the wrong path. <laughs> like I knew that yeah. this is not the direction I want to go. Mm. Fuck. I want to be in that play where I fall in love with a horse or whatever. <laughs> I want to be in that. <laughs> Uh, that's his first interview for the day. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's got, he's got <laughs> 10 hours of it. Yeah, that's good stuff. Uh, do you think we bring a lot of ourselves into these characters that we invent? Just people being fed up? Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. So we can bring... No, I don't want to just be at home in bed eating donuts. No, absolutely not. <laughs> we can bring our game to this large Ted Bowl fair and give it the authenticity and the heartbeat of something that makes it not just inf- effects laden nonsense. So I've heard sure. other interviews where it's like, I don't know, like it seems like there's a lot of things going on. And yeah. Is there, a, like, I worry there's enough character in it. But, you know, I think, you know, it's Sam Raimi and it's Marvel and it's him. I think it, this is going to be, I think yeah. it's going to be very good. Who do you think Bruce Campbell's going to play? Uh, Mysterio, let's say. Nice. MCU Mysterio. Yeah, nice. Well. What do you think? Uh, or Ash? What if just, they just brought in just, Ash? Just a snooty. What if he's in the zombie universe? Just a, Ash? a snooty waiter just tumbling through <laughs> space. Oh my! Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what if they went into the zombie universe and Ash was there for who whatever owns, reason? Who owns? I guess. I guess Sam Raimi owns Ash Williams, Might. right? I guess whoever did it initially. I don't. I honestly don't know. Yeah, yeah that'd be cool. I, I, get, I, I, oh, I mean, it probably at this point, even if Sam Raimi doesn't own that character because it, it's the production company that 
or yeah. it's you know it's it, it was whoever it was distributed by originally. They would then. love to get a little bit. They of would promo. love to get at that, but also Marvel could probably just buy whoever that is now. Yeah, exactly. So I guess they could put Ash Williams in. I'm just trying to see who uh, who actually owns it. Though. And they have done, I think, Army of Darkness, Marvel Zombies crossover. Oh, I'm pretty have, confident. Yeah, they you're have. probably right. That yeah, makes sense. So. Yeah. Well, New Line Cinema apparently, cinema apparently own it, so I don't know. They're I don't even know what New Line Cinema is anymore. Like, yeah, I that's a great. I reckon question. it's just a, a collection of paperwork in a drawer somewhere. <laughs> so I reckon Marvel could buy it. They could buy and that. They could buy that. A they man could bu- standing over it. They could like, buy the don't, building. Don't it's open in. the drawer. Yeah, or yeah. you can. I don't, know. <laughs> that's right. I don't know. They don't pay me enough to care which yeah. one it is. Are they merged with Warner Brothers? Oh, then they're, then so it's that, off the table probably. Ah, yeah. uh, but then again, like we'll talk about a bit later. But there's some cameos in Peacemaker. Which were made possible through Marvel. Interesting. Filmed with Marvel. Really? Yeah. We'll talk about it later. Right, Anyways, so we get a zombie universe, it seems. Yeah. We get a cartoon universe, potentially. There's like yeah, a, I wonder if. There's like yeah. the VLC traffic cone. It's like popping out, it looks like. Oh, yeah, anime. right. Like, yeah. There's, uh, there's, Some of the poster also suggests, like, mm, I, think, I think we see a Captain, Captain Carter, Carter in, in one, there. Yeah. yeah. She's probably on the Illuminati. But, um,. What else were I going to say? Uh, Ryan Reynolds said this week that I'm I'm really not in the movie. I'm promising I'm not in the movie. But after Andrew Garfield, nothing can be believed. Mm. He could be telling the truth. He said the gold standard for lying. In he Hollywood. is a big liar. Yeah, yeah. He's known for it. He's not friend. even American. No, he's not exactly. God, that's so disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> what else were I going to say? But, yeah, I think, like, pretty much every version of Doctor Strange, if he's got a different haircut or a different clo- clothes, could be another version. That's true. Or maybe some of them, like, there's speculation that the zombie version is the same one who's got the ponytail. It's like the same guy. Yeah. Oh, here's a question, of course. Yeah. Uh, who do you think, which Doctor Strange do you think is going to be the evil one? It's probably the not, not the one we think, right? Like, the the obviously evil Doctor Strange, the mm. one from the What If episode. Yeah, I don't think it's He's him. not, you're right. It's the, there's it's another, the hero one. there's a hero yeah. looking one who's like an, who appears to be an even more heroic version of regular yeah. Doctor Strange. That's the evil one, yeah. right? Yeah, or he turns into a zombie or yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. I completely agree. Yeah. Do we have an Ace Rimmer style version of it oh, as well? I love Ace Rimmer. Man. Like, it's it's Doctor Strange, but cool leather jacket yeah, yeah. And, and sunglasses. Now, that is so. cool. What do you think of that Defender Strange look with the, the ponytail and the. <laughs> Yeah, not bad. Or whatever. Um, um, yeah. yeah, that's a look from the comics as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, for it? sure. Yeah, can't remember which yeah. one. Yeah. Anyway, that's our Red Dwarf episode for the year. So. Yeah, that's right. You got it. You're happy, Dwarf, happy so. nerds. Also, just as we said before, every time we're talking about Red Dwarf, just someone edit that together. Mm-hmm. There's your Red Dwarf. That's episode. your Red Dwarf. Did episode. you watch the Promised Land? No, I did. There's a little bit of bonus Red Dwarf oh, content. That's nice. Right. That wasn't bad. Oh, you liked it? it? Yeah, no, pretty it good. All. all right. Yeah. I'll watch everything Red Dwarf. I don't care. Yeah, I don't care what it is. That's right. I had some good gags in it. What else, Mason? Anything else that you need to talk about on this? In that this? trailer? Uh, not especially. Only the, the Ultron bots are in it. And that, what does that suggest? Does that suggest... Is it a Hank Pym, maybe? In, maybe he's from well, maybe. the where Hank Pym maybe. Or is it, are they remnants of the Ultron? How much of this is going to tie into those what-if episodes? Great question. Probably a lot. Some I people are say. saying that the evil Doctor Strange in this is not the evil Doctor Strange from the from the other Doctor, from the what-if. Huh? Because they, di- they wear different clothes. But huh. they, I don't know. Man can change his clothes. Well, I'd love that to be true, Mason. <laughs> What a dream. Yeah. Uh, what, what's your, like, I think it's like Spider, like Tobey Maguire is probably going to be in it. If Like a whole bunch of stuff, I think. Because it's Sam Raimi as well. Oh, of course, yeah. What's the thing that you're like, doesn't have to be true, but what's like oh, something you, you'll love to see? Uh, Maybe you're in it. Maybe you fly past the camera. Oh, my goodness. Hello. My goodness. <laughs> Weekly Planet Podcast. Oh, I'll get a little plug <laughs> in there. Okay, that's there, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd mess, I'd mess it up. I'd be like, Weekly Planet Podcast. And people are like, what does that mean? <laughs> We're not going to Google it, though. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, but if you go to Google and you type in Weekly Planet Podcast, it's like, we're not going to help you. <laughs> yeah, sorry, no. No, no. Yeah. Ah, uh, gosh. Mm, it's a multiverse of madness. Yeah. I want to see a live-action character interact with an animated character okay. like that Paula Abdul video <laughs> where she one? talks to uh, opposites attract. I don't remember She's that. in love with MC Scat Cat, who's an animated cat. Wow, that yeah. sounds right up your alley. Yep. Wait, no. <laughs> 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 uh. <laughs> cool. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'd love to see a live action Howard the Duck more. Oh, oh, yeah, right. Maybe he's on the council. Let's put someone silly on the council, you know? Yeah. Someone silly and stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Not that he's that stupid. 
But he he's is kind of, he's, he's a, a silly duck. and he's a duck. That's stupid. Yeah, and again, we have seen him live action also. But, That's true, but not that much. Oh, what about the old school Howard the Duck? Oh my god! Oh, yeah. look, like the puppet one. That'd be cr- like I would love to see like all like the the TV yeah. version of the Hulk from like the seventies and eighties. Yeah, like that old Spider Man show, the Captain America wearing the crash helmet. I think we're gonna see some really weird. <laughs> so shit. the Illuminati is is all the old. Oh no, TV. I just mean stuff. No, we'll that's see. what I want now. Okay, yeah, that's yes. what I want now. But stuff we'll see. Yes, yeah. like maybe even like. Japanese Spider-Man robot. Spider-Man, I, don't, yeah. I don't know. Mm. But, I mean, I think they're actually saving that for the Sony animated yeah, thing yeah. as well. But, um, yeah, let's do everything. Mm. All right. Well, I'm going to ruminate on that and then just later I'm just going to say a thing that I want to be in that. Yeah. So And then we'll see what Gore Babinski thinks. But That's not right. right now. Okay. <laughs> We've still got him in the line. Hold he's the he's line, holding on Gore. you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Lord of the Rings trailer. Yeah. You just watched it. I did. My note is, yeah, okay. Same. Yeah. I didn't write anything down because I couldn't be bothered. But <laughs> if I did, it would be that. It's the second or first age. Sure. I don't know. It's not the. I know it's before. Certainly, the, it's kind of a shiny age. It's a very shiny. Well, people are. One of the criticisms is that it looks more like the Hobbit than it does original Lord of the Rings. Ah, oh, sure, sure, sure. And it's. I don't think they're technically connected. Like, I think it's kind of like. It's not the Peter Jackson. No. Universe. So they don't need not. to lead, lead straight into No, the it doesn't have one. to aesthetically look the same. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, you know, I, 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 look, if it wasn't Lord of the Rings, honestly, I wouldn't know. Right. I guess, but some of the imagery, I yeah, guess. Yeah, nothing really stood out as yeah. particularly Lord of the Ringsy. Yeah. Uh, is this I mean, a... the ring, certainly. When, Even that. Is there a ring in it? I've seen a ring before. Yeah, okay, that's true. Uh, is this an age where any of the recognisable characters from Lord of the Rings, like is Gandalf still a, is he around I, well, in this? Fact, there's a rumour because there's a guy who steps out of like a fiery pit Ooh. and that's like Gandalf arriving on Earth via comet. Nice. And he's like, oh, shit. Is that how he got here? Yeah, he's from space. I, I mean, don't know. Or here, I don't heaven. know. Yeah. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I don't know how he gets anywhere. Maybe yeah. he's got a bike. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I don't know how he gets anywhere. I don't know anything about this universe. It's not my universe. Yeah, sure. Like, I, know, uh-huh. you know, I was saying this to Matt, who edits the other day. I know a lot about how they made those movies. Yeah. Like, because I watched every fucking thing that behind yeah, the scenes yeah. thing. But I don't know anything about, like, the, the law. It's probably not a bike because his robe would get caught in the chain. Oh, I'd yeah. Say. Could he get one of those bike clips where he clips it onto clips his, it to his leg? Yeah, his probably. Leg. Yeah, that would work, actually. Yeah. yeah, cool. What did I see that in recently? I watched Lord of the Rings. You saw the Lord of the Rings I did watch, trailer. I watched yeah. Lord of the Ring. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, House of, it's in House of Gucci. There oh. you go. It was in that. Anyways, Mason, that's cool. Um, I'd love to talk more about this billion-dollar um, <laughs> Just Gandalf doing, like, series. sick jumps off, like, a Hobbiton house. Do you ever see <laughs> – what's that? Um, the the BMX stunt guy and the angel? It's the Mitchell oh, and sketch? Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Um, BMX Bandit and, and something the angel, angel Summoner. The Angel Summoner and BMX Bandit. Yeah. There we go, yeah. One of them has the power of BMX tricks and the other ones can summon invisible angels that can do anything. And they're, they're a two. Really good. Yeah. Look it up. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Lord of the Rings. Billion dollars. Let's say it. it look, looked all right. Yeah, it looked all right. Yeah. I, mean, it it looked, I mean, it looked very expensive. Are these new characters or are they from no, the most, Silmarillion or something? I think most of them are from a thing. Okay, whatever. great, great, yeah, great. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to learn and some of their names in 10 years. By, yeah. by 10 years' time, I'll have learned some of their names. Okay. Yeah. You think it's going to be still going in 10 years? No, I'll just I'll – have, I'll have, it'll have seeped into my brain enough by then that okay, I'll cool. learn, know a couple of their names. And it will push out something else, yeah. no doubt. Mm-hmm. We also got a trailer for Chippendale – Rescue Rangers. That's right. Which is not a reboot. Mm-hmm. It's a continuation, but it's set 30 years after. Yes. And one of them is is real and one of them's a cartoon. Correct, yes. And one of them's John Mulaney. Mm-hmm. And um, also it's Roger Rabbit is in it and yeah. it seems like it's a Roger Rabbit movie. It's Roger Rabbit again. It's yeah. a framed Roger Rabbit but a modern day thing. The bloody It's the bloody Lonely Islander getting Why into this. Why not? I've, I mean, I've, I have I trust everything else they've put out. Yeah. Uh, Popstar. Never Stop, Never Stop and very yeah. good. Criminally Unsane. Uh, Hot Rod. Hot Rod. Is that, is that Lonely Island technically? Andy yeah, Samberg's some of them are in it. Yeah. What else? Uh, those sketches. Those songs that those they songs do. Those songs that they did, those the ones albums. about the dick in the box. Yeah, 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 Justin yeah. Timberlake's yeah. in it. Space Olympics. Yeah, Space Olympics. It's funny. The Michael Bolton one. Yeah, yeah. Where he loves movies. Ah, uh, they're all good. Yep, it's great. Okay. Yeah. Those, their movies don't. Do well. They do badly. <laughs> they do badly. But uh, like you said, generally very good. Because I mean, gem- I would say generally they don't get released here. Oh, they did. I- they did Palm Springs. Oh yeah, that's great. And that's good. Yeah. yeah so Most of go. the stuff that they release doesn't get a general release in Australia, so we end up watching it on streaming usually. Yeah, exactly. So, oh, so they direct. They did MacGruber again. Nobody saw it. They did the Watch. What is that? Oh yeah, that was that Ben Stiller Night Watch one. They did Popstar. They did Michael Bolton's big sexy Valentine's Day special. Didn't watch that. Mm-hmm. 
They did the unauthorized Bash Brothers experience. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think, is that about the Bash Brothers from, yeah, it is. That was the one about the Bash Brothers from whatever whatever they're in. Goonies. Wait. No, um, Mighty Ducks. Mighty Ducks. Do you know Emilio Estevez left the Mighty Ducks series? No, I didn't Replacing know. him with a different person. Whoa. Just like Mighty Ducks 3, which wow. is what then when that happened in that. Anyway, there you go. Chip and Dale, a show that I sort of liked as a kid, and now it's back. I don't think I did like it as a kid, but I'm more I'm excited for this. One of them's dressed like Indiana Jones and the other's dressed like Tom Selleck from Magnum PI. Yep. What's not to like, Mason? Nothing. Speaking of animated characters. Go on. Uh, it's time for Warner Brothers to trot out the Looney Tunes again, Mason. Is it? Yep. Surely not. Did you not look at your watch, Mason? Did you not realise it was that time already? Oh, it's Looney Tunes reboot time. That's right. I mean, we just had fucking that uh, base, not baseball, basketball, one. Space Jam, Space Jam, mm-hmm. which is like I feel like that's like Looney Tunes in name only. Yeah, there was none of the like o- the authenticity or the comedy mm. or is is there F- for me? Maybe sure. there's a lot of people that love seeing the Iron Giant. Did fucking... you show, you showed your son the original Space Jam? Yeah, but not the new one. I showed him both. What do you he think liked of the new one? one? Yeah, he liked them both. Wow. Yeah, because, you know, kids. Yeah. And that's who they're for, probably. No, yeah. they should be for me. <laughs> that's right. Anyways, uh, this one's interesting, though, because it stars John Cena, and it's actually based on an article, uh, a fake article from 1990 called Coyote vs. Acme. Okay. So it so tells the story of a down-on-his-luck attorney who takes on Wiley Coyote as a client as the iconic cartoon character looks to sue Ac- Acme for its many defective products, where things take a turn when the boss, John Cena, at a former law firm is revealed to be representing Acme in the lawsuit. So that sounds interesting. And also, like, do kids like that? <laughs> I don't know. That sounds interesting, though, right? I yeah. mean, we've seen recently and, you know, prior to recently, John Cena has, like, he's got acting chops. He's got and range. He's very funny. He's more than the Marine. He's more I'm, than the Marine. I'm, I'm willing to admit that now. Yes, you are. So what Good at you, riffing as well, it seems. He's doing a good riff. Mm. He can name a list of things, can't he? You better believe it. Yeah, so there you go. What do you think? I'll Coyote yeah. versus Acme. I'll watch that. Based on a fake article from 1990 about a fake law case or whatever. Yep, it's a real article. It. It's a fake law case. Ah, I see. Presumably. I'll watch that. So there you go. Mm-hmm. Now, before we talk about Peacemaker Season 1, sure. I guess we should throw it out there that uh, it's been confirmed that Peacemaker Season 2 is moving forward. Whoa. James Gunn will write and direct every single episode. Whoa. Uh, which is, of course, what he did for the first. He's currently making his way through Guardians of the Galaxy. You'll know, finish that off, I presumably. <laughs> sure. Or he might abandon it yeah, as, a, just, as a goof. Just bin it. Yeah. But um, I, I mean, okay, let's get into it now. We're going to do non-spoilers and then... Spoilers, would you say? Mm, sure, those, yeah. those some spoilers because there's things that you're gonna, you kind of have to talk about mm. when you talk about a show. Yeah. Uh, but I feel like th- him moving over to DC, which kind of happened by by accident. Sure, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because of the, you know, the, that was dropped by Marvel for a time. Mm-hmm. Was a was a very, like, lucky circumstance for him. Yeah. But I feel like this is a universe and a world that works very well with his new and old aesthetic. Sure, Do you know yeah. what I mean by yeah. that? I think I do. Because, like, for Peacemaker, for example, the show that we are currently talking about, mm-hmm. it's got, like, the gore of his early kind of trauma stuff or, yeah. like, a slither or, like, a the, the wrench-hitting man. Not as much, but... Uh, yeah, but it's definitely there. And then it's also kind of got, like... He hasn't had to completely clean up his no. act. No, and then he can, and he can be sweary, but then it's got, like, the fun team dynamic of, like, a Guardians, yeah. for mm-hmm. example. You know what I mean? I think he can also get, like, emotional and sad and depressing yeah. and grim... And like and grim and gross, but also again, it's got that heart to it. So and I you know it, why? Because nobody cares about these characters. <laughs> That's why. You're probably right. That's with, like, which is probably the same with Guardians, right? Yeah, I think yeah, it is. Yeah, started. because there's no there's no impetus or there's no editorial mandate to be like these characters must be like this yep. because we need to you know pinball them into another series or into another movie or what yeah. have you. It's like like if he was like, I want to do a Batman series. And I want this to happen to Batman. There'd yeah. have to be there'd be meetings, and, yeah. and I'm sure these meetings were these. I as mean, well. I want to want to talk about that specifically in a bit. Yeah, but like, if if anybody wants to to make a change to, to Batman, that's that's got to go through everybody in the world. Well, th- there's a there's a number of times in this series, and this is not a spoiler, I guess, yeah. but where he references other superheroes and then says a thing that he read that they did. Yes, and it's always like an awful sexual thing. Or yeah, whatever. yeah. Because he's just a liar. He's just a liar. Or, or he, just he reads his, it on Facebook. Whatever, yeah. yeah. But one of the the one that they had trouble with was 
Batman. Yeah. That was the one specifically that, like, the, I, I can't remember what he said specifically about Superman. And he says something really terrible about Green Arrow in, yeah. like, in the <laughs> last right. yeah, episode. Yeah. yeah. And, but Batman was the one where they went, they, they went, well, Batman's kind of, he's serious, actually. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. That's kind of our golden goose at Warner Brothers. Well, it's just, like, for, for a bit of, for a bit of background on Peacemaker, mm. so Peacemaker wasn't originally created for DC. It was no, uh, it was a yeah, it, it was from a, yeah. like a Peacemaker was part of like a basket of characters that DC acquired when they bought another company called Charlton Comics yeah. in the eighties. You would all you would know this, James, but for people who don't know, is it about anime? Yes. No. No. Then I might. Oh, okay, not. great. If great, it was great. anime. I definitely yeah, yeah. not. So basically, they acquired them all in the eighties, mm. and then. Writer Alan Moore, who was yeah. writing for DC at the time before he swore off writing for DC and Marvel yeah. Forever, uh, he heard that they'd acquired these characters, and he was like, and he and he immediately wrote like a, a story, like a story outline for a twelve issue series, oh. starring all of them. Why have I never heard of? This I know, thing? right? So then, so he went to DC editorial with this, and they were like, okay, we like this, but what the story you've, you've written will permanently remove some of these characters yeah. and we want to integrate them into the regular DC universe and make them big, big, big time, big stars. So what are some of these characters? For Like a Blue Beetle was in there. A Blue Beetle was in uh, there. The Question. The Question was in there. Yeah. Uh, Peacemaker. Yeah. Uh, Peter Cannon, Thunderbolt. Yep. Uh, uh, and, yeah, and so instead of doing that, Alan Moore and artist Dave Gibbons, mm. of course, redesigned and renamed all these characters. And, and created they did the Watch- Killing Joke. That's, yeah, <laughs> That's a, that's a killing joke. Thank you. I'm laughing so hard I died. Oh, thank you. But they made Watchmen. The ultimate we, compliment. That's the ultimate joke. <laughs> uh, but uh, obviously what is it? What I think is ironic about that is that... Watch, oh, yeah, Watchmen. Sorry. Watchmen, you did what, say Watchmen. I did say yeah, Watchmen. Yeah, yeah. Watchmen hasn't been out of print since the no. 80s, but all the characters that DC bought to like maybe potentially become their new kind of yeah. stars, they all got a kind of a big push in like the early yeah. mid-80s. They all got their own book at some point, I think. Yeah. But then they all just sort of got relegated to the background, yeah. including Peacemaker, who was a reg- who became the comedian in, yes. in Watchmen. Um, the biggest was before this was probably Blue Beetle. Yeah, probably, probably Blue Beetle because yeah. he was on the Justice League sometimes. Yeah. that's really interesting, though, isn't it? That yeah. now, I mean, and you know, obviously the Watchmen characters also. It's funny because like they they bring them back anyway in various yeah. prequels, or they mm-hmm. like a new person will be Rorschach or, yeah, yeah. or whatever. Uh-huh. So that not that that really yeah. mattered anyway. Yeah. But yeah, but it's interesting that it's taken more than thirty years to get one of these characters, like one of these Charlton characters, into uh, you know the mainstream. Yeah, absolutely. and again, it's like it's a character that, and it's also interesting that. Peacemaker in the comic books is serious business. Yeah. Like, he's not a jokey... And, I mean, it, it also, like, like the Suicide Squad, I imagine they'll tweak the character in the comic books to be more like the TV series. But, yeah. But Peacemaker and Vigilante are, like, serious business in the comics. They're yes. not They're not joke characters. No. But because nobody cares about these characters... And the you same can... thing, again, happened to Guardians. Yeah. Although a lot of that was established, though, in, like, later runs, to be fair. Yeah, true. But, um... But yeah, no, you're absolutely right. You can do whatever you want with these characters. And I guess you can do even more with like these characters because this is a spin-off of Suicide Squad, which just any drop kit can be in. Yes, that's true. Obviously. Yeah. So yeah. that I think that's super interesting the way that you know this this has ended up. Mm. And look, it's very good. It is good. It's like it's one it's definitely one of the better comic book shows on TV. And I think well, first of all, like it's it's very well written, it's well cast. Well acted, like it looks great, but also, um, and I think uh, you know, a lot of shows recently kind of suffer from this. It is like the exact right amount of episodes, yeah, the story they want to tell. Like the pacing is so tight, and they're mysteries, but they're resolved in a way that doesn't feel like, can we get to the thing? Yeah, you know what I mean, it's very well paced in the sense that, like, you know, tension builds, and then there's a big problem, and then they solve the problem, but then another thing emerges, yeah. and and tension builds again, and there's like a lot of layers because it's a team that don't trust each other, yeah, and there's also lots of lots of external forces acting upon them, and, and they're very under resourced, and none of them have superpowers, probably, mm. you know what I mean? But I also think what it what it does nail in terms of like the original Peacemaker character and um. Oh, what's it? What's the other one called? Vigilante, Vigilante yeah. is that they're they're very efficient killers. Sure, yeah. Like there's a moment where Vigilante goes into prison to, to you know to go after a certain character, and in doing so, like you're like this guy, the in, Hamburglar, the Hamburglar, yeah, he it's goes like, into prison to kill he's the Hamburglar. He's in over his head here. Like there's a bunch of white supremacists. He's about to get stomped, uh-huh. but he just fucking like wipes the floor with them like yeah. very easily. And I think 
what so even though they are a joke they are in for the things that they need to do there yeah you you know you can see why they survive yeah basically. sure you can right, see no. why they're, they're still around why if someone comes up against them who is super powered why how they can get out of that you know mm. i think it absolutely works and the team itself like jennifer holland daniel brooks like they're all excellent you know what mm, i mean yeah. like really really you know good together and they all even like the they all kind of get little action moments some mm. more, more kind of hand to hand than others yeah but the, and that's all very good also you it's know? very good because yeah. they're all kind of lower level like middle management suicide like task force x characters or they've been like demoted mm. from the movie if you've seen the movie which you probably have but again they're all like they they can all use a gun and they can all know a little bit of Self defense, you mm. know, for them, a little bit of Krav Maga, yeah, exactly. Except probably Steve Ag. You know yeah, mean? sure. But uh, yeah, just really good stuff. Here's a question for you though, because a few people, like none of my friends, have watched this. One right. of my night and my normie friends, and sure. I'm like, you should watch it. It's yeah, really yeah. good. You'll like it. Uh-huh. And then I'm like, but you have to see the Suicide Squad really going into this. And a lot of people have just gone, I'm not, I'm not watching we that. Saw the, we saw the previous yeah, Suicide Squad. Which is a massive. I don't know if you have to. No, well, that's what I was going to say because I think you should because it's a very good movie and yeah, it right. leads perfectly into this, obviously. Uh-huh. But do you think you could just go into this as I think you go into this. If I have one criticism about this series, it is some of, this, some of the stuff in this series very similar to stuff that happened in the Suicide Squad. Okay, sure. Like part of the overarching plot, very similar. Okay, yeah, I can see that. I didn't think about that, but yeah, yeah. you're right. Like the the, the and I think I think if you went, I think if you went the Suicide Squad and then immediately into this, you'd be like, is this? Yeah, is this all this guy does? Yeah, that's is all, right. this, all this guy does. Yeah, I mean the 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 finer details are different. Yes, but it is kind of. So I didn't even know it. I didn't even kind of make that connection but also like because you were on your phone the whole I'm on time. The phone the whole time but often with like you know comic book shows and dc stuff or whatever there is a larger looming threat whatever sure. that might be and it's mm-hmm. often a similarish thing potentially yeah, yeah you know what i mean that that didn't bother me and i guess with the threat also it feels high stakes enough to be over the head of these people uh-huh. but not a, the justice league but they're probably doing something else yeah right, you know right, what right. i mean mm-hmm. until they would be needed but i i think they Perfectly, like they hit that exact level of challenge. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, for sure. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, should we, or I guess we we will do spoilers in a bit. I guess, but the action is very good. Mm-hmm. Like it's all very well choreographed and very gory, head stomped and limbs broken. And maybe they fight a gorilla in one episode. Who is to say, <laughs> Mason? But yeah, I was gonna. Well, speaking of that, yeah, they do. They fight a gorilla, <laughs> but. This move, and I don't want to compare this to any other TV series that we've seen recently, but it's better than the book of Boba Fett by wow. by, a, by a very wide margin. But it's interesting that it it it's obviously a lot cheaper. It would have to be like right? it would be a lot yeah. like the you know there's elements to this where they're like they're clearly like where should we set this fight sequence? I don't know, parking lot, yeah, <laughs> just a parking lot or a field. Yeah. I don't know, like but but it's <laughs> That's true, yeah. and and I think with the you know when they fight the gorilla, spoilers, they fight a gorilla, yeah. Most of the time, the gorilla is out of like you don't see it. And you it's don't dark. See, yeah, you don't yeah. see it. And it's dark. So, the, but but its effect like it doesn't look fake. No, and so, it does. It know? does feel like a very effective, you know, sequence, yeah. and it does feel dangerous. And the, the fight sequences are really good. Yeah, in that they uh, they certainly break a lot of tiles, and they walls. break they break <laughs> a lot of tiles. It feels like a real fight between two skilled. Yeah, fighters going on. It it doesn't feel like. It, there's there's a there's a great flow to it, and it mm. doesn't feel it doesn't feel like okay, you punch and then you'll block and then then I'll punch and then yeah. It just feels like it always feels when there's two people having a fist fight in this. It just feels like two experts going at it. Well, yeah, I think the one one of the ones that stood out for me was the um, peacemaker versus judo master, mm-hmm. who's like this five foot tall like amazing martial artist. But but it's also the way the fight kind of plays out is that. Just because he's smaller, uh-huh. even though he's probably more skilled, he he can't beat Peacemaker yeah. because Peacemaker's a house. Yes, you know? exactly. <laughs> and yeah, we'll yeah. just like and we'll just throw him through a car. Yeah, you know. So I think the fact that they took all of those things into consideration, and you see that when somebody mm. fights another person, they factor in what that person yeah. could do in this particular scenario, mm-hmm. or maybe they'll just trip over a fence and break their leg, sure, or something, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, I also think like all the different little things that his helmet does is help his different various <laughs> helmets. I like that 
So his father, uh, who's played by Robert You like Patrick, that his father's a white supremacist. I didn't say that, Mason. Wow. You said that. Wow. But his father, who is a white supremacist, and I don't like that, actually. Wow. Um, You've he, changed your tune. Yeah, he's got a... <laughs> I got a lot of texts that say the, <laughs> the exact opposite of that. He's got, like, an interdimensional workshop. Yeah. And that's just this weird little comic book trope or, yeah. like, idea... Robert, Robert Patrick is very good at playing just a this. horrible man. <laughs> Isn't he just... Have they... <laughs> It, do you think they've sized him up somehow, Robert like Patrick? Like made him bigger. Because there's a moment where you see them both sitting on a stoop, piece yeah. of John Cena and Robert Patrick. Let me check his height. Because I, maybe, he's, maybe he's always been very tall, but I always think of him I as – I thought he was like smaller than Arnold. Like he's supposed to be quite small. But there's a moment where they're both sitting on a stoop and they look like about the same size yeah. or even like Robert Patrick's bigger than oh, him. Oh, actually, well, Robert Patrick is 180, uh, 1.83 metres, 183 centimetres, and John Cena is 1.85. So oh, they're okay. around the same they're height. The, okay, right. I guess John Cena's just like, you know, mm. he's wide. Sure, like yeah. He's yeah. Had, like he's yeah. got a lot of potatoes. Anyway, talk more about this white supremacist issue you like. No, <laughs> no Mason. Um, I did like the backstory of Peacemaker, though. Yeah. And, the, you know, the situation with his brother and, like, mm. you understand why he is the way he is. And he's he's not a bad person because the ideals that his dad have, yeah. which also I do not share. Sure. Uh, you know, he's that, it's conflicting for him because he wants to do good and he needs his dad or he thinks he does. Yeah. But also he's kind of like, yeah, he's a white supremacist. But I'll tell I, you what I did like about I, the series. I like most of this, almost everything about the series. Yeah. But what I, the thing that I especially liked is they sort of – they may, they managed to segue him out of being like an irredeemably awful person. Mm. Going into this or prior to the release of this, I assumed that this was going to be a prequel. Yeah, okay, yeah. Because I'm like, well, after. He died. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, he's not, he didn't. He didn't yeah. The end of but the after, movie, I'm but. like, well, he's, you know, he's an awful, he's an awful villain, essentially. Yeah. And, and I don't believe I would enjoy seeing his antics. Yeah, he wasn't, and we talked about this after the movie came out, he wasn't our choice for a spin-off show. No, no. <laughs> but obviously, like, James Gunn had a very you know, good idea mm-hmm. and, you know, and wanted to run with that, mm-hmm. Yeah, which is probably why he's making this show and we're doing this podcast. Correct, That's yes. That's the only difference between us. I think so too, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I, I like also little things. Your hair's like, a little bit greyer than his. How dare you, Mason, quite frankly. <laughs> I've got some black in this. Yeah, no, he's all I do white. like his grey hair, though. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Um, I, I like those little moments where, like, he's having, a, like, a confrontation with his dad's neighbour. He's, like, an old guy, and he's like, what kind of superhero are you? Where's your rogues gallery? And he's like, they're all fucking dead because I kill them. Yeah. And I think that conversation about how Batman's a moron because he keeps letting people out yeah. is the bit that they yeah. were like, should we put this in or yeah. whatever? Also, what version of Batman is in this universe even? Mm. I guess we'll find out soon. Yeah. But um, and even little things like they mention they mention like matter eating lad, kite man, doll man, bat mite, mm, yeah, like yeah. all these minor kind of characters. Yeah. I love the idea and I wish they'd done more of this mm. in this the 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 point of difference of the DCEU to the MCU is that the MCU was like being created as we were watching it. But the, the DCEU, they just went. This universe has been around for a long time. It's really true. And yeah. there's just crazy stuff happens all the time. You and just it's haven't just, seen it. You yet. just haven't seen it yet. And it's just been part of the history. And and this is just a world that's gotten used to this weird stuff. Yeah. And I'm, you know, why not Batmite? Sure. Why not Batmite? Why not Batmite? Yeah. Why not Batmite? Uh, let's do spoilers. Okay. So also uh, the the opening title sequence. Yeah. It's if any if anybody <laughs> skips that, criminal. It's weird, so weird because. Before I saw it, James Gunn was like, my goal was to make an unskippable yeah. intro. And uh-huh. I'm like, impossible. Yeah. I, there is not an intro that I skip, <laughs> that I don't skip. Uh-huh. I don't, I, and he's right. And uh-huh. it's the song from like 2010 as well. Yeah. It's not, I thought it was like a hair metal song from no, the No, they're 80s. like yeah. um, Wigwam from like um, Norway or Iceland or, or Sweden right. or something like that. They're like, they're like the, you know, the darkness. Yeah, okay, yeah. They're kind of like that. They're like a funny glam metal band, but the, they they seem to take everything very seriously. But if you listen to the lyrics, you're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> so, they, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. But a lot of the bands good. in the, a lot, uh, like there's some real deep cuts in there. Some of those, some of the bands that, like there's he, there's various scenes where people go through old record collections yeah. and I'm like, are any of these real? I don't know. I thought I was pretty across <laughs> yeah. bad 80s hair metal bands, but I guess yeah. not. I mean, James Gunn has like very like eclectic and I that's think you know, growing up in that era, he's probably, yeah, yeah. like for example, we brought up the other week, Sister Hazel and that's oh, yeah. our. That's our, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's our that's era. That's beautiful, yeah. That's how we bond. Yeah. Uh, but I love the fact that everybody's in the opening sequence. Yeah. Just spoilers, whatever. Just everybody who's in the entire show, yeah, yeah pretty much, yeah. Mm. With... 
I was going to say some exceptions, like of minor characters, but even like the janitor. The janitor's in it, yeah. in like an episode and a half, maybe, you know. Or yeah, Danny L. Brooks's character's wife is in the yeah, exactly. is front and center in the dance sequence. Manda Waller, though, not in it. Oh, good point. Yeah, yeah, not a lot of not a lot of play. But anyways, anyway, best series ever. I agree. What, what, a good, what a good time. Jordan. And also, uh, I think I mentioned this earlier. If you do watch it, uh, go to the end of the credits because they do outtakes, and it's just it's cl- it, it's either jokes that landed up on the cutting room floor because they were too long, yeah. or just bits where people were just riffing. Yeah. And there's this, there's a sequence in one episode where Peacemaker is mad at a character for. It, Peacemaker's mad at uh, John Economist for framing someone. Yeah. Uh, I'll, we'll spoil it in spoilers. Uh, and he's, it's just him listing an, a list of names of people he could have framed instead. <laughs> yeah. And it's just... It's I'd just, love to know whether that was improv. I or, think it is because yeah. the, the the scene after the credits, it's just, it, it feels very real. I don't yeah. know. It's so, good. Yeah. Yeah. He's done and he some Because an age is a stand-up comedian. Oh, that's so, a good point, yeah. So I guess they probably probably bounced off each other pretty exactly. well. Exactly. So there you bloody go. Anyway, so the spoilers are that the, the villains are the villains of sort mm-hmm. are called the butterflies and they're basically they are alien bugs from another yep. planet and they come down to Earth and they bur- burrow into your brain, mm-hmm. take over your body, and then they they have a this global plan of world domination mm-hmm. seemingly for nefarious purposes. Oh, yes. Uh, and I think at some point – they're not strictly from the comics as well. I've like, never heard of them, but I don't know. I think the only connection you could make is Mr. Yeah, Starro again. Yes, they're Star- yes, but like uh, Mr. Mind. The like, oh, the worm. He's a, he's a yeah. caterpillar worm man, and is there some connection there? But I would say even then that's pretty I wouldn't. Tenuous. It wouldn't surprise me if they wanted to use Mr. Mind. Yeah. But they did him in Shazam? Sort well, of? they sort of did him in Shazam, and I think there's it's using Shazam stuff is a is a – there's a lot of gray. There's a lot of legal gray area in there for for whatever reason, like, yeah. Because of ownership rights and stuff like that. Shazam, Captain Marvel, Shazam was in an episode of Justice League. Mm. He's in one episode to fight, and he fights Batman. Not Batman. He fights Superman. Yeah. And apparently, that was an absolute nightmare to arrange because of the ownership. Oh, really? They, okay. they wanted to put him in the whole series, but they couldn't because yeah, right. Complicated. Well, there you go. Yeah, that is complicated, yeah, isn't com- it, Mason? Yes. Yeah. On the, on the of the back of that, so um, builds up to uh, a Starship Trooper style big alien bug that they yes, have to kill, the which cow. is a cow, which is providing sustenance for the for the butterfly people or whatever, mm-hmm. and they're going to teleport it out to another place, mm-hmm. but they have to go in and kill it and whatever. Mm-hmm. And it, what's interesting, it throws and I, I'm jumping way ahead, but that it throws out the kind of the moral conundrum at the end of we're not here to harm people of Earth. Yeah. Except that we're burrowing into their skulls and whatever. Sure, sure, sure. And they and they they have this. They have the same ethos as Peacemaker. Mm. They ultimately they want to save the world, but in order to do that, they might have to kill and burrow into the brains of everybody on Earth to yeah, do it. To do and, it, yeah. and is that is that worth it? And he and Peacemaker is having a change of heart over the the, the course of the series, and yeah. maybe that's uh, that's not also what he wants like, to do anymore. Maybe they're not. Maybe she's lying to him. That's true. Yeah. Maybe that's not. I mean, I to me it seemed. Legit, and that's what actually was happening. Uh-huh. But yeah, I think it really like kind of as it's coming to the bit where I'm like, okay, and they're gonna blow up the thing and whatever. There was a moment to stop and be like, hang on a minute, <laughs> sure, yeah, <laughs> what is actually happening uh-huh. here? And maybe the guy who was working for them is he's the bad guy, yeah, which was like a double bluff because <laughs> it's re- <laughs> there's multiple like levels to that guy as well. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? which, he was really good also. But I, I thought that was terrific just to kind of stop and he has to think about it and then he ultimately does what he always does, mm. really, for good or ill, yeah. probably ill, mm-hmm. and, you know, fires a person <laughs> through it and whatever. But even leading up to that, like that moment in the field, you know what I mean? They've got that kind of they live kind of like. Yeah, right. And what's that other one? With Donald they Sutherland. Live too. They live too. You know, the other one. Stepford is, Wives. Yeah, sure. They've got that kind of Stepford Wives thing. That's what I was trying yeah, to yeah. say. The Matthew Broderick movie. Mm. That, that, you know, that kind of alien swarm. Cocoon. Cocoon. No. No, it's not Cocoon. <laughs> it's not Cocoon, It's not Cocoon, mostly. cocoon at all, though. No. They're going to need another title sequence. Because of all the people that Because they... all the people that died. Because all the cops yeah. were killed. Yeah. yeah. Or keep it. Or keep it. Or keep it, whatever. Yeah. But, you know, because they... But also, like, they hinted all these kind of... Other characters and and the and you know Justice League members and whatever mm-hmm. and then at the end yeah some of them some show of the up. Justice League again <laughs> notably not Batman notably well, probably for the same reasons I actually I do have a some idea of what's going on there mm-hmm. so it was initially only supposed to be Jason Momoa okay. but then it turned out that Ezra Miller was available so okay. they went yep uh, Ezra Miller I think was filmed through Marvel 
when James Gunn was filming Guardians. Okay. So Marvel were like, yeah, you can use the studio to oh, interesting. do this right. green screen cameo. Okay. Which is interesting. I don't think. So Ezra Miller and Jason Momoa were not together. I would doubt it. Because Within... otherwise they probably would have <laughs> interacted physically. Sure, I'd imagine, yeah. You know? A fist bump or a. Uh, I mean, you could do that on green screen. Big hug. Yeah. You know? But I, I just, I, I, like, I wasn't expecting it. When I saw their silhouettes, yeah. I was like, oh, this is just mm-hmm. stand-ins. And some of them were. Mm. But I thought that was really fascinating. And the fact that he was able to just openly mock Aquaman, even though he's got a billion-dollar movie coming out yeah, this right. year, you know, is I don't think there's a lot of people who work for DC who would, they would allow to That's do true. that. You know? And Jason Momoa was apparently like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'll okay, talk great. about having sex with fish. That's absolutely fine. But, yeah, so... Wonder Woman was there, obviously a stand-in. Yes. Superman was there as a stand-in. Yeah. I, I saw an interview recently with Henry Cavill and he's like, I absolutely would be in the – love to be in back in the back in the Superman suit. Yeah. Well, you had your chance, mate. Well, he's probably out of contract and they would have yeah, had yeah. to pay him. And he's probably, probably doing Sherlock Holmes and he's all He's probably Holmes. doing it – yeah, and also the other thing is – He's at a games workshop. He's at a games workshop. He's at a games workshop. Why am I figurines? <laughs> he's like, I cannot. I have a regular – I have a regular appointment at the Games Workshop. And the last time we saw him, uh, aside from Justice League, the the reissue, whatever you want to call it, uh-huh. the remaster, mm. um, he was faceless in Shazam. Oh, of course, yeah. I mean, he, it wasn't him, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's clearly something going on there. And I still think DC don't know what they're doing with Superman. Definitely, yeah. Or which version of Superman that is going to be. And mm. I just think he's also out of contract at the moment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Cyborg was missing because Ray Fish is not going to come back to Warner Brothers. Not surprising. Like anytime sure. soon, it seems, until there's like a big shift in like the higher ups. And Batman was actually filmed. There was a stunt double oh. or body double who did it, put on right. the suit. But mm. I think that also is a fact, is a thing of like, which Batman is this? Like, right. You don't think it's just the Snyderverse Batman? Not necessarily because okay. I think in the Flash they're going You think going it should to... have been the 60s Batman? Yes. Nice. No, look, it probably was a Snyderverse one, but I think also. <laughs> Everybody else is in shadow and he's just in daytime <laughs> outside the, the, the Gotham Police Department. <laughs> With a parasol. Yeah. yeah. But I think. I think they're trying to figure out. I think we're going to get a shift in Batman later this year with the right, Flash, right. Uh-huh. and I think they probably didn't want to confuse people. And I also think because Robert Pattinson is going to be Batman soon, yeah. So right, I think right. that's probably a factor. But yeah, see, that's the thing though. You can't just chuck him in, can you? No, but you can chuck Vigilante in. Exactly. Nobody cares. I, I love Vigilante as a kid. Me too. Yeah. They recast him like a few episodes in, and they had to reshoot all of that. The previous oh, actor wasn't working. So this working. is Freddie Stromer. Yeah. Also British. Yes. Uh, who was the previous one? I can't remember his name, okay. um, but but yeah. So he left like uh, like just creative differences. I'm not sure. Oh. That doesn't seem to be yeah, right. bad blood. Mm. What's his name? Mm. Not Peacemaker, Vigilante. Vigilante. And his uh his his visor's prescription. James Gunn confirmed. That makes sense. Yeah, may- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've always thought about that. I'm like, yeah, I'd yeah. have to get a prescription visor. Uh, original visor. Pretty strong. He's very much. Uh, he's the Bugs Bunny of this. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. Like there's there's mo like there's mo so I don't know if this is look if if somebody wants to bug James Gunn about this I'd be curious so Adrian Chase the the vigilante that he is the the version that's been put in the show yeah in the comic books he had a va- it was never really uh, explained properly really but he he could like recover very quickly from like. Wounds and things, and like right, okay. including gunshot wounds and well, stuff like that. That sort of happens in this. Yeah, well, that's what I'm that's saying. Like he sort of it was ne- it, w- it was sort of a pseudo mystical thing. I think it was like a mind over matter right. thing. He didn't really have any superpowers, but he could like I think he learned this skill somewhere or something like that. It was one of those vague you know things. And this guy, like in a lot of the sh- like if somebody like at one point Harcourt is is shot and it's a real. You know, it's a real dramatic thing and yeah. there's a long recovery process. But Vigilante gets shot and stabbed. The bomb and goes off the in front of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, he, and he's just fine in the next scene. So I'm wondering if that if that was factored in. Yeah, you're probably right. So it was Chris Conrad was the original actor. Oh. Uh, and also, interestingly enough, and I've just found um, a quote here from James Gunn. He said, yeah, he came in late, as in Freddy. Yeah. We already shot five and a half episodes with the actor. Wow. An incredibly talented guy, but we were... We're on different pages about certain things, and I don't think he wanted to continue on the series in the long run, so we brought in Freddie uh, uh, and, and five and a half episodes and reshot all of his scenes. Wow. So there you go. So that's quite a lot. That's a lot, yeah. <laughs> I feel like also in other cir- circumstances they'd just be like, you just kill him at the end of the season or we'll recast him next season and who cares. Yeah, right, right, right. You know? Yeah. Well, and I mean, again, again, the vigilante, interestingly, is a character who, like that version, 
so spoiler alert for like the late eighties, early nineties, he killed himself. I oh, did he? And they just kept. He's, it's it's a he's Putting a, a new person. He's in a the very story. rare character in the sense that they haven't just brought him back to life. They brought in his brother, yeah, right, Dorian Chase, Dorian as as a, new, Chase. as a new vigilante. And there's been a bunch of other vigilantes. There's been a lady vigilante. There was a split personality vigilante that didn't know he was the vigilante. Mm. Like there's been a bunch of them, and yeah. he's just never come back. That, would, that in itself, I mean, I do want to see him come back, but that would have been interesting where they bring in a different guy every season. Right? He's just getting yeah, killed. Yeah. They just <laughs> so, do the they do the rush job. They did, they did that in Titans where Jason Todd was killed yeah. and then a week later he's the Red Hood as opposed <laughs> to like two decades. <laughs> a week? Was it a week? It was a week. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what was it in terms of continuity of the show, Mason? A week. <laughs> One week. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> was it a work week? Was it five days? I think it was like a calendar week. It would <laughs> okay. have been seven days, yeah. So... James Gunn also said this about like Batman and who else wasn't or was involved yeah, right. in it. He says, you know, I don't know, uh, I don't know what I can. There are reasons for it, but I'm actually uncertain whether I can say what those reasons are. It might have to do with future stuff. So yeah, right. That's like Batman related, and mm. uh, so I'd imagine, and maybe Cyborg, and I, I don't know. But um, yeah. anyway, I feel like I've got caught up on that cameo that big cameo at the end where it's not really the point of the show. <laughs> sure sure isn't, yeah. But what a good... It's a, it's a, it's a character yeah. uh, growing beyond, it's a person growing beyond like their their upbringing and, yeah. and, and becoming a new person. And he sees his dad in, a, in dreams. Oh, yeah, he goes mad as well. And he's his dad's got, mad. got like a big white supremacist <laughs> suit that he, he yeah. flies around yeah, in or yeah. whatever. Mm. Man, good stuff. Yeah. Uh, not the white supremacy thing that I'm against. I don't know. Just you did. Clarify. You did combine those two senses very closely together, which was odd. I thought. I like to think there was a long enough pause where people could understand that I mm. was not referring to the previous thing when I said good stuff. I tell you what, I'm enjoying this riff. This, <laughs> I, I think this is the this is the new uh, one of us is attracted to Maid Marian <laughs> okay. joke. It's you are a white supremacist. <laughs> <laughs> or no, you're not. You just agree with a lot of the stuff that they say. No, Mason, okay, that's not fine. true either. Okay. <laughs> Turn this into a meme. They don't have there. any good points. All right, all right. I mean, they, they dress weirdly as well. Like, even, I was going to say, like, they, they don't even wear nice clothes. I have good haircuts. That's true. Anyways. Uh, also, for people wondering, this is I'm changing the subject. Are we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for people wondering when Eagly is a real eagle and when he's a CGI, never? he's never a real That's eagle. He's thought, always yeah. CGI the whole time. But it's pretty, it's very impressive. Anyway. I love that in, um, and this is not a, a diss at Marvel, but in uh, for the Falcon, he's got a, a killer drone. Yes, right. And in, and in the comics, the Falcon has had a Falcon as a pet. But here they're just like, yeah, he's got an eagle. And it just pecks out people's eyes, and <laughs> yeah. it's just like a really well-trained eagle. Yeah, for some reason that he mm. has. Yeah, good stuff. Anyways, again, best series ever. You should watch it, mate. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, you should watch it. I liked it. it. it was no, good. I recommend it to you. Okay, great. I'll see. Yeah. I'll watch it. Now, look, whether people like it or not, we watched Uncharted, all right? true, yeah. We went to cinemas mm. and we said, one ticket to Uncharted, please. Yeah. I got on Mason's shoulders. That's and, right. <laughs> and they were like, we didn't wear a trench coat. It was nah. just two men on, on shoulders just and they like, went, who cares? That's we fine. We don't care yeah, yeah. at all. Uh, so anyways, just on the topic of that, I, uh, that, up top there was PlayStation Productions. It was, we got, wasn't we it? We got yeah. to look at all sorts of PlayStation characters. We got oh, a Kratos. Yes. And we got uh, the, the woman who kills robots. Yeah, yeah. And we got Ratchet and or Clank. Yeah. Or Turner and or Hooch. That's right. All the other PlayStation icons. Oh, great. Um, I thought it was like, oh, because there was a Ratchet and Clank movie, I want to say, a few years ago. Was there this not? This the first time uh, they've used this? Yes. So oh, the, gonna, the production logo. Yeah. Interesting. So it's uh, they've gone Uncharted. Yeah. They're doing a Ghost of Tsushima. Okay. Which is great. Right. It's a really good game. They've got a Last of Us TV series. Oh, yeah. They've got a Twisted Metal TV series, I want to say. The the car racing game. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Huh. Never like a real, a real death race kind of situation. I there. guess it is. What yeah. is that game about? Is it a car race or yeah, is it like death arena? Or is it it's it more a death arena, I think, yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Well, I can't wait for that. Anyways. <laughs> Mason, this movie Uncharted. Go on. This Sony production pictures. Yes. Uh, it, it's, uh, Tom Holland is back at cinemas. Oh, yes. Um, I didn't ask you what the story was for Peacemaker, but I won't forget this time. Mason. Oh, yes. Um, so it was expected to make around $30 million at the US box office on its opening weekend. But How actually, it it's getting going to be closer to $45 million. Not bad. So critically not doing well. Audience scores on like Rotten Tomatoes, very positive. It's about 88%. Cost $120 million. What do you think the story was? And let's see what you think. Uh, have you seen the trailer to the movie Uncharted? I've, saw, I've seen that. Oh, it's trailer. that. Okay. It's that. It's just, just all the things. That all the things. The trailer and the, the betrayal, trailer. Multiple in, betrayals. And... In order. Um, and the, the final, 
the final shot of the movie is in the trailer, so that's good. Oh, it is too. Yeah, it is. That's yeah. very Sony. <laughs> Sony, welcome back. As a as a quick side note, yeah, I was at the supermarket and I was getting some grocery shopping, and and I figured what I'll do is You're I'll getting some grocery. I was shopping. doing my grocery shopping, and okay. I thought I'll get something. I'll get something for now because if I don't eat something on the way here, I'll be yeah. all out of sorts. Yeah, kind of thing. And so you know, like at the supermarket, you can get like those pre made. Like pre already cut in half little sandwiches in a box. Sure, yeah. You know, those ones. I got one of those and I'm like, it's all right. It's pretty all right. Okay. It was it was, you know, hit the spot and uh and Is this a metaphor? Yes, yeah, a metaphor. You're doing a metaphor. I'm doing Mason? a metaphor. Let me get the metaphor out. Okay. And I'm like, you know what, I wouldn't recommend anybody go out of their way to get one of these. Yeah. And I reckon with a bit of time, you could produce something better than this. Or you could add something to it, maybe. You could add something to it. Yeah. But I think uh Something, but maybe some fresher ingredients. Fresher ingredients, but it certainly was not the worst thing. Yeah. And what I'm saying is that Uncharted is the supermarket sandwich of movies. <laughs> is what I'm saying ultimately. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Yeah. Because look, I wasn't like, man, I can't wait for this. But, but you're also like, I can't wait for this to end. Yeah, but I'm sitting there and I'm like, this is all right. Yeah. It's, what, what, I, I can't. I, again, same with you. I, I will not recommend it. <laughs> I'm not saying go out and see it. I think if it's on streaming in a year yeah, and you don't have to pay for it, you could totally – like it doesn't need to be on the big screen. Mm. I think it's got like serviceable performances and acting sure. and it combines some of the games together into one relatively cohesive narrative. Well, I wonder about that because, again, I've – I can tell you all about it, I've Mason. played snippets of some of them. <laughs> uh, so I guess – is this just the plot of one of them or is this a new storyline here? So the structure is, I feel like the structure is, is of part two because part two opens with a big action sequence uh-huh. and then it does a little bit of it and yeah. then it cuts back and then yeah, it right. builds up to that action sequence yeah. again, which is how this starts. Mm. Uh, also, and it, it and to, and it also introduces one of the characters from two. So Chloe is from game two. Hello. Hello. I'm, I'm Australian. Chloe. I thought she was good and also not Australian. Her name was uh, Sophie, Ta- Sophie Taylor Ali, and yeah, she's American. Yeah. And I thought her Australian accent pretty solid. So there you go. I thought she was I'm good. I'm from Newcastle. Newcastle. That's in Sydney. New South That's Wales. That's in New South Wales, actually. <laughs> Russell Crowe lives near me, I think. Anyways, um, so it's got the big plane action scene of yes, three yep. and the flashback of three and also four, I guess. Uh, oh, because the Nate. I know that Nathan Drake's childhood isn't – that's, a, that's addressed in four, maybe? It's addressed a little bit in three, where he meets Sully, uh-huh. and it's also, but the stuff with his brother is in four. Mm. And the pirate ship, though not a flying pirate ship, is also in four. I and guess the question here becomes, like, what have they got left for there's future a, There's movies. a bunch of things he can clamber up. He could fight those yetis. He could fight I know the yetis. Fought, I know there's some yetis in there's one of them. There's some yetis in game number two. That's right. He could go to the snow. Mm. Uncharted isn't just about going to the, to the, to the ocean. There are many things you can unchart. Wow. Anyways, how did you feel? I uh, when it started and Tom Col- Tom Colander Tom Holland <laughs> yes. was a cool bartender. Yeah, I'm like I don't. I, but mm-hmm. it, it, it settled pretty quickly for me. Probably took me about a minute to adjust that his, this is not Peter Parker. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Um, he's, he's doing a cocktail. He's doing a cocktail. Yeah. No, I think I adjusted to him. Yeah. Yeah. Adjusted just fine. Yeah. What the th- a thought that I had when, when watching this movie is that if they w- when they made these movies in like the 30s and 40s, yeah. they would have just built a pirate ship or like the top of a pirate ship sure. and put a matte painting of some water and sky behind it, yep. and then just thrown some buckets of water at the at the, at the whatever at the yeah. cast, yep. and then they would have pretended to be fighting on a on a pirate ship. I'm like, we've really come a long way. Like, it's weird for me to look at this and go, oh, the the cargo, the, the cargo coming out of the back of the cargo plane doesn't look very realistic. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's kind of like that's amazing. Yes, but also we are all, we are also in an era we're in an era where we can CGI that, but also we are in an era where Tom Cruise would do that for real. <laughs> and so it's it seems like for a for a, for a, <laughs> such a huge franchise, yeah. like for for a for like a, Fast and Furious are dropping cars out of planes, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, like life? it feels it it kind of feels like they should have gone the extra mile and actually I mean it certainly looks expensive, doesn't it? It looks expensive, but uh, it didn't look real in part. It didn't look real I think all the stuff on the ground sure. is all yeah. looks real for the most oh, part. Oh that's why because you know? I looked it up because they they it a lot of this was done in a studio in Germany. Like some okay. of it was done made on location 
and some was at like Babelberg Studios in, in Germany or something like that. And I'm like, you know, it's a, yeah. it's a, they used to do filmed, studio filmed pictures all the time. Yeah, and of course this was this was also filmed during the pandemic, yeah, I think. Exactly. So like, I think it was filmed before Spider-Man. Oh, right, I'm pretty okay. sure as well. Mm. But yeah, so I, I think, I mean, Tom Holland, look, I don't care who's Nathan Drake. I've played literally every game. In- You're Nathan Drake. Am I? He's me. I've killed 200 men. Um, a game, <laughs> per game. But, you know, like... I, I'd like. I know a lot of people talk about that Nathan Fillion short film, sure. which is very good. Mm-hmm. Um, and look, I don't think he's like the Nathan Drake from the games. Though we do see the Nathan Drake from the games. Oh, he's on the beach, point. right? Yeah, but, that's just the voice, though, not the. Yes, Nolan. Is that North, again? Nolan, Nolan North. Okay, yeah. right. He does every voice. Yeah, he, he does your true. voice, but um, not mine. Not mine. Oh. But um, I think I. I and again, I've even played the Vita game. And I've completed them all. And I played one to three recently because I was like, I'll do some of the Caravan of Garbage. And I didn't You're a Vita completer. I'm a Vita completer, I am. But I, I, don't, I don't care that he's Nathan Drake. Okay. And he's different. Like he's a you – know, what I do like about him is because he's small is that if he's fighting a big guy, mm-hmm. he's quick, but he's – Com- he's not comparable in strength. We talk yeah, about right. just with Peacemaker, you know. Like if they grab him, they will fucking batter him. Sure, yeah. So yeah. he's like a little monkey, you know. Yeah, he's right. like a, <laughs> you know? How did you feel then? Speaking of bad guys battering a little man around, yeah. how did you feel about the villains? Yeah, because there's a there's a bit of a and there's a there's a there's a switch up. There's a Scotsman. During, yeah, there's a switch up and a Scotsman. Yeah, and there's a, there's 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 not an. I think they didn't commit to either of the villains. I feel yeah. like the main villains enough. Without spoiling it, there's there's Antonio Banderas is a uh, is a is a trust fund kid. Yeah, he's a sixty year old trust fund kid. Yeah, and he wants to he wants to get a, a big big time treasure because his his old dad is going to cut him off. Yeah, from the uh, oh he, he he it's a it's a family treasure ultimately. Yeah, and then he's hired some. He's hired various muscle, including a lady who is uh, one of Sully. Tati Gab- uh, Gabriel. Who yeah. is like uh, an, an old nemesis of Sully. Yeah. And then she's got two henchmen, a Scotsman and some other guy. Yeah. I don't actually know that some other guy is, but yes. No, nobody does. He's... Yeah, but I only know the Scotsman because like Tom Holland's like, what are you saying? I'm not, I don't know what you're right, saying. Right, but the other guy, what was his? I don't know. Couldn't, yeah. he, he couldn't tell you anything about him. And then some guys with guns. And some guys with guns and whatever. But again, like I thought those two, like the main villains, yeah. were, you know, they... They were they were fine, but not enough to do either of them yeah. to make it like either of them. Like the second one was more menacing than the first. Yeah, right. But I I don't think either of them had enough. Yeah, to I don't know. I think and again, I I don't know. My, I don't know anything about Uncharted really. Yeah. So it's interesting. We've got me who doesn't know anything about Uncharted. You think Big, it's pretty, biggest you, fan. I mean, I didn't fan. play the card game but or whatever. Also, there's I didn't a card play the game? card game. Wow. You, I don't know. We gotta get more. Who's got the most points? I don't know. Why well, do card games work? That's exactly. You know, there's like, oh, new Uncharted game. It's a digital card game. Yeah, and you right, trade right. and you get it. Get fucks. <laughs> but uh, and there must be huge. I wonder if there are huge fans out there who are like, we've been betrayed by this, or if the people I, are like, definitely. That. Yeah, but I, I feel like in this sort of adventure movie, mm. I want somebody like. I want a cackling top hatted villain Agreed. who's like, I'm getting the prize before you, Nathan Drake. Yeah. <laughs> Look what they did with the mummy. Like the the better examples of yeah, these right. kind of movies. Look what they did with all the good Indiana Jones movies. Mm. You know? They've got cackling villains and the villains have like insane sidekicks and whatever. Mm. You, they, they but none of you're right, but that none of that is here. I guess if I had a problem with any of the casting, it's that like as well, Wahlberg is just he's not doing anything other than Mark Wahlberg stuff. And it's yeah, what, right. like there's a moment he's just work, wearing like a workout top on one of these missions. Yeah, it just right. looks like something you'll see on his Instagram that he's wearing in his home gym or whatever. Yeah, right, right. But like, and look, again, he's like, he's, he's charismatic as well. And I think they work well together. Yeah, they're pretty good. Despite yeah. what you think of Mark Wahlberg yeah. in real life. That's right. <laughs> but, but it's just like, he's just, you know, he's just doing a mark. And then at the end he's like, I've got a Hawaiian shirt and a mustache. Remember this and yeah, whatever? Mm-hmm. And Nathan Drake graduates to Henley's as the movie progresses. And he gets his little and holsters. And he gets his gun yeah. holsters and whatever. Mm-hmm. Anyway, let's uh, let's just do spoilers because whatever. Okay. Uh, it wasn't the worst movie ever. No. It was uh, so by default it's the best movie ever. But don't don't rush out and no, see it. No, do not rush and see it. Yeah, don't, uh, don't risk anything. Do not rush and see it. Do not. Go on. I was going to say another country, but, you know, there's yeah. a conflict. And I'm, I'm not, I won't. <laughs> I want to do that, Mason. Yeah, right. Let's mm. keep it non-political. Let's here. keep it non-political. Yeah. Mm. Um. So, look, I think also uh, when we talk about the action, like mm. that's a key component of Uncharted, and right. also a key component of Uncharted is he kills two hundred men. 
And also a key component of action movies is good action, I think. So. Yes, that's true. But it, he doesn't he doesn't shoot anybody of this, except he gets his guns at the very end. Yeah, right. But then he shoots a helicopter with a cannon. But I also think... <laughs> does, that, does Nathan Drake shoot a helicopter with a cannon in the so. games? I don't think so. Right. Or may, no, maybe a rocket launcher in one of the games. Okay, but right. I think you cannot have Tom Holland shoot 200 men. <laughs> <laughs> you know? All right, I guess. <laughs> you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I guess. You can't have him run through a jungle and crouch behind walls mm. and shoot 200 people. I guess my question then to you would be, is it essential that Nathan Drake kills a lot of people? No. Yeah, That's right. just a component of the video game because you need levels between the cutscenes. Yeah, scenes. right, right, exactly. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But he doesn't – but I think, would you say shooting is is – yeah, com- uh, is an essential component tonight. Like, what if he was like, what? If, what if it's guns blazing, but he's always like shooting over the top of people's heads, or he's shooting, you know, chandeliers, or he's, you know, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, that's whatever. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't look. Yeah, look, I did kind of again, having not really played the games, only little bits. I did expect more shooting. Yeah, from on on behalf of the protagonists. But he doesn't do a lot of shooting, like in the cutscenes, really. Okay, right. I mean? And <laughs> this movie, and this is, is a cutscene. It's okay. just the cutscenes, yeah, right. isn't it? And another element of uh, Uncharted, aside from you have to kill two hundred men every game, mm. is that. The, you need you need traps, or but really less. They, they're not really traps in this. They're more like they spook you a little bit. Okay, so, ooh, stay back from okay. here. Some spookums. Some spookums. Is that you? you know, there's puzzles, and it's okay. like in this, it's like yeah, you look for a key, you get trapped in a, uh, a big room filling with water. You uh-huh. visit a Papa John's. It didn't <laughs> feel very like it was like yeah, this is all right. This is imagine Uncharted-esque. going to Italy, yeah, and going to Papa John's Pizza. <laughs> Is there a Papa John's pizza in Italy? Great or, question. Or have, they, or have they moved that in there for – I mean, it's obviously going to be pro, uh, uh, product placement reasons. Yes. But surely there's not a, a Papa John's pizza. Is Papa John's pizza like one of those ones that they've done controversial stuff recently? Yeah, the guy got fired for saying the N-word, but also he thinks it was under um, – he was saying it as an example of not to say it. Oh, that's terrific. Um, okay. So is it in Italy? I don't know. International okay, great. stores. Let me find Someone out. Someone will know. Italian, it's, Italian listeners. Italian, let us know. Take a uh, photo in. Uh, like the in, international s- store page is not. Is there very an international well. house of pancakes? Uh, what's a great question, isn't it though? Yeah, there's one in Milan, maybe. Ooh, there you go. That Thank cannot goodness. be good. I've been to Milan, and uh, let me tell you, the good people in Milan wouldn't be having that. Whoa, not even for a second, Mason. Whoa. So yeah, look, I don't know. Like, what did you think of the puzzles? Open a thing, and destroy a thing. Uh, turn a key. To key. Another key. Oh, wait, combine the keys. Go together. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Oh wait, this room is filling with water. Actually. Uh, Open the key, open the door, Sully. Open this four hundred year old door. Hopefully it opens and we don't drown. Yeah, good. I mean, turn the gear. I mean, like, it's interesting that they really, really needed those keys. Yep. In so far as they already knew where to go. Yeah. And they could probably just stick a crowbar in there, <laughs> just a couple of crowbars. Yeah. I mean, those keys are just real. Yeah, exactly. You know what you could do? You could take a photo of the key. Yep. And three D print a copy. Yeah. And then just go there. And then just go, or just smash down a wall. Just smash down a wall with a big hammer. Yeah. Yeah. Or a, a cannon. Fire yeah, a cannon. Just at like it. a wooden door or a yeah. rock. You got to get through. That's, <laughs> that's fine. right. Yeah. Yeah. And often that you'll have to go through a nightclub. That's true. You know, and that's fine, isn't it? It is fine. But I, yeah, all that was fine. And there was only really one component of one section of the movie, which was that you know, where solving yeah, keys and riddles and whatever. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. I like. I, I. It wasn't one of the. Didn't feel like it was like one of the stronger ones that they had in the game. So right. I mean, and also, how do you even convey that? Really? Great, well, Great. and the way answer is Raiders of the Lost Ark, where he goes under Venice. That's how you do it. You, do it like sure, that. you just do that again. That's yeah, the yeah. way you do it. That's the way you do it. Or the bit at the end where he has to go through the traps and his dad's been shot, and he has to do all the things. He has to remember the Bible verses or whatever. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all good stuff. Mm-hmm. A better movie. <laughs> Nolan North was in it. Yeah, sure. Nolan was. North, he was like, "Oh, that something happened to me." And he'd be like, "Shut up, old Shut man." Up. Yeah, no, it didn't. Shut up. He's, you're a liar. I could buy a car. Yeah. You know what I didn't like about this? Go on. It was, there was about too, too many, you've betrayed me. Oh, there's you, a lot of intrigue. You, you, it's, but it, they, they never kind of settled into trust. You know what right, I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it ended with, we're in spoilers, right? Yeah. It, it, Chloe just sort of disappeared in the third she act. She was in a boat at the end. She wasn't was in a boat at the end, but it's weird that she didn't show up at all. Yeah. Like they were just like, we don't know what to do with this character. Yeah. Like, I mean, you're not going to – I mean, obviously the, at the end, you know, we think – Sully. you know, we don't, I mean, we don't actually think this, but we think Sully is just going to leave with the gold, but then he has a change of heart because he's learned to trust or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I know we, we had that, so maybe there's not room for two people learn to trust. Yeah. But you're not going to give Chloe anything to do? Like she's go, just – They go, there's Chloe. She's, all, she's got away on a she's, boat. Yeah, yeah. She's, we're, we're, I sent her on a wild goose chase. There she is. Ha-ha. Uh, Great. We got just enough gold for our next adventure, I oh, think. Oh, yes, please. 
Also, um, here's a here's a random thought. When Antonio Banderas' throat gets cut, nothing happens. Nothing happens. Just I guess all the, the air I guess all the air in his lungs escaped through the hole in his neck and he died. Is that how is that <laughs> how deflated. lungs work? Yeah. And I know it's, you know, probably PG thirteen in the US. Definitely. Just do it off camera, mate. Do it off camera. Or oh, have him gone bleeding heavily, you can't see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm off camera like yeah. that. I'm yeah. off camera. Mm. Oh my god. But I'd love just, to do another Just Zorin a cut movie. throat and then he's just like clunk. My family, et cetera, and so yeah, forth. Yeah, his family, et cetera, and so forth, yeah. So there was a lot of booze as well. People being like, I need a drink. I need a bloody drink <laughs> after what's bloody happened to me. Any, just then, I um, any, I mean, there was a lot of, you know, obviously they couldn't have gotten through this adventure without their Sony Xperia phones. That's <laughs> true. Uh, how, and, do you, how do you even live any, any day? I, I don't know, life? man. I don't know. Why even bother? Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, so there was some Sony in there. Uh, but there there was, I mean, and pal- uh, besides that and Papa John's, there was relatively little just offensive product placement. So Pirate was, chips? Oh yeah, I guess they had a big they get a, had a big sponsorship. For I wouldn't swing on any of those ropes. Yeah, they're swinging yeah. on those ropes. Yeah, yeah, I'm swinging on any of those yeah. five hundred year old ropes. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't have done any of this probably. <laughs> oh, yeah, you reckon? Honest, nah, probably yeah, not. Yeah, it looks like hard work to be honest. This is from Benson Maid, and we will talk about post credits. Mason mm-hmm. says you once asked, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. You once asked which film had a better origin story, Solo or Tomb Raider. Now you have to throw Uncharted into the mix. Uh, but which set uh, sets up the game is on? Oh, I definitely had a better music score. Well, yeah, it's also the music from the game. A uh, lot of it, not all of it, but yeah. Rescored or just? Some I recognised, some I did not, okay, right. Mason. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, at the end, his brother, guess what? His brother Sam is alive. Yeah, Just waiting to be recast in the next movie probably. Oh, yeah? Didn't um, like him? Didn't like this guy? No, I just didn't think that uh, I think they would have shown him. If it oh, was I see. Right, right. Yeah, I guess Even though we true. did see a photo of him with a beard, I don't yeah, yeah. think. Okay, I mean, maybe right. they will. I don't know. Who do you think they'll get? Scott Eastwood? I could get Scott Eastwood. Yeah. So Wyatt Wassel. Wyatt Rush. Riot Wassel. Riot Bustle. Um, the Mirror Universe Riot Wassel. <laughs> Wyatt Russell. Wyatt Russell. So yeah, so at the end, yeah. I do I think they might do another one of these. I think they're Yeah. And I, I mean I, I guess I guess sched, two the two stars schedule permitting, I guess. Yeah, and no, they're casting a... they cast both young, so they could do this for twenty years if they are a success. Who, who are you talking about? Like Wal- oh, Wal- Wal- and Okay, yeah, he still counts as young. Like, well, he's like oh, like 50. he's sixty in the like 60, 65. Though he does a lot of spry leaping about in the game. Right, right, right. Yeah, and they could always just turn him into um, you know that guy, Sam Big Mustache. Sam Big Mustache. You know that guy, Sam Elliott. Sam Elliott. Yeah, yeah. Straight exactly. cast him as Sam Elliott at some point. It's totally fine. Yeah, you could absolutely do that. So anyway, go on. Um, watch it on streaming in a year. Yeah, do do that. <laughs> Good thing we had other things to talk about this episode. Right. I mean, I could talk about Uncharted all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just trying to think about it. <laughs> trying to think of another thing to say, Anything though. about Uncharted. There wasn't a, was there a big car chase? Not really. There's a car in the sky. There's a bit where oh, they had yeah, to go into yeah, yeah. A, a party, and he's like, you better you better turn off that uh, security so I can oh, yeah, do yeah, a yeah. heist. Yeah, it was something, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, and then he's turned his jacket inside out. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. I agree. Yeah. Can I have the next segment of the show? Yes, please. If only one of us knew what it was. It's what we're reading. Yeah. What we're going to read. That is actually, you're right. That's right. I'm doing a thing. What Westworld. Very nice work. Thank you. Mason, it's the what we're reading segment of the show. It sure is. I hope you've been busy this week. Uh, I hope you've been doing your homework, Mason. I'll tell you what I did watch. Yeah. Speaking of uh, speaking of Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> yeah, you I did, did watch. I did. I got well, I got Paramount Plus. And I'm like, what's the one thing that I want to watch on Paramount Plus? Yellow jackets. Yeah, well, I did. I watched that. It's good. It's great. Yeah. Great show. Uh pretty gory. Yeah, me, I like, literally Ooh. just finished it. I'll Ooh. talk about it on Suggestible this week, my Ooh. less successful show. Um It's a spookier show than I thought. Spooky, I wasn't right? expecting spookiness. Yeah, yeah. And well cast, I thought the young, the young actors versus like the, their modern incarnations, very good. But I did watch Infinite, also starring Mark Wahlberg. The Mark Wahlberg's a Highlander or whatever it why is. Did, why did you watch it? Though? I don't know. I just wanted to see if it was okay. And it's not. It's bad. <laughs> it's but again, it's a it's a. Should tell each of us it. I know, he? right? How's he? It's all right. I thought you'd seen it. I haven't seen it. Oh, okay, right. Uh yeah. I mean, he's <laughs> what what I like about it is that there is a scene where Chua tell each of us. Uh, he needs. He's in his mansion, yeah, and and it's being stormed by the good guys because mm. he's a bad guy. Oh, uh, and he he launches some drones, but he doesn't just like launch them off his phone or off a computer or something like that. He's it's got a big a, panel. No, he's got a really big like glowing VR Minority Report hologram <laughs> control <laughs> panel for it. So he puts some gloves on. He puts the Minority Report gloves on, and he's uh, doing this and dancing and doing all no. the bit of this. But it's a movie where so it's it's. 
it does the one of the things that I like that it like it's it it cost a lot of money this movie I think yeah or it didn't I don't know I'll find out it, but it's there's a lot of stuff that's that's I like meant to look really cool and badass and whatever but it doesn't work yeah like um like the 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 characters like they drive an Aston Martin but it's got a big CGI battering ram can grow out of the front of it oh uh, but the the what's interesting in the real world like it happens in the it's not in a VR <laughs> no that's in the real world cool. So how come Tutel E24 remembers all these memories and lives? Well, everybody does. How come Mark Wahlberg Mark, doesn't? So Mark, so the the premise. So you remember from when you're a baby? No, you you remember like when you get to like puberty, you remember or some of you, like your memories sort of gradually come back. So okay. for people who don't who haven't seen it, the premise is that Mark Wahlberg is like a he's a real loser. Yep. But he can do stuff well, like. What he, about the uh, the movie? The movie. <laughs> Nice. You're welcome. Uh, but but he can do stuff like he can. He knows how to make a samurai sword. Oh, like just just. Uh, and then, but then it turns out that uh, he doesn't a, know they're bad. That's right. <laughs> People go to use them yeah, and they yeah, break yeah. immediately. Right. <laughs> okay, I've just found they out. You got I, bits of broken glass in the handle. <laughs> you pick them up and it. I have. Uh, I went to the Infinite Wikipedia and I have clicked on this because I. But I don't know when. Okay, great. Yeah, I can't find the budget. Let me find. Okay. It. Anyway, going. the premise is that basically. He discovers that uh, he is an infinite, uh, but basically uh, there are these people. There's a there's a few hundred in the world, and when they die, they are immediately reincarnated into another body, and then they as they grow up, they remember everything. Anywhere, yeah, anywhere in the world. Wow. But and then they then they meet up and whatever. But because Mark Wal when Mark Wahlberg was a kid, he was uh, he was. Diagnosed schizophrenic, and they put oh, they, they put him on meds. Yeah, they put him on meds, and also he's in a he was in a motorcycle accident, so he has a metal plate in his head. Okay, uh, and so he does he his memory isn't coming back, but they need his memory to come back because he hit a the the bad guy Chiwetel Ejiofor had a like a he built a he built a weapon and it can kill everybody in the world or whatever you know one of those ones, and in Mark Wahlberg's previous reincarnation, uh, knew where knows where it is. Was he Japanese? He's making swords. At one point, I think he was Japanese, but his previous body was not Japanese. It was Mark Wahlberg again. Uh, but I think they'll just be like, "Yeah, he had magic and he can do it." Um, but what it, this thing, do, this movie does one of the things that I like the least, which is why I'm not mad about spoiling it. All the stuff that I explained to you, mm. Mark Wahlberg explains in a voiceover at the start of the so movie. So I die at the end of this movie. Yeah, <laughs> this is how I die. He's like, "There are these people called infinites, and they reincarnate." Uh, God, that is. They reincarnate, and then they're, and they're bat. And one, there's two groups, and one group wants to do this, and the other group wants to build a big bomb or whatever, and they have a big battle. And I, how did I get into this? But it's like I hate it because it's like we know it's going to be explained. Yeah, I don't want it spoiled. Yeah, uh, it's like the uh, Dark City where they explain it. Oh yeah, the bad version of Dark. Yeah, the bad City. version of Dark City. Yeah, yeah, the one they. Released. The one they released, released yeah. Uh, but anyway, great movie. Loved it. Oh, cool. Yeah. Wow, interesting. So we've both watched interesting things this week because I watch Amazon. Absolutely. You should go, you should, you should go to YouTube <laughs> yeah. and just, just that show it tell you for hologram. <laughs> Going through cyberspace or whatever. Yeah, 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 cyberspace, yeah. You, uh, and what, what were you doing? I was going to say, yeah, I watched Amazon absolutely fuck Comixology this week. That's what oh, I watched. yeah, so they're, they're updating the app or something? Yeah. Are they, are and, they midway through an update yeah, or something? Yeah, it seemed to be. They didn't get it down pat. And it's just the app is bad. Like it's complete. If you if you don't need to update it, do not. Like the website. So Comixology you, is a is a the the comic yeah. reading app, which which is Where now owned most by of Amazon. The stuff is on, and they yeah, bought yeah. it in 2014. And you used to be able to buy in app. Yeah. And then they changed it. We have to buy it on the website. Then you can know because otherwise they get a piece of the in app per- purchase. And yeah, I'm right, like, right. that's annoying, but I understand it. And now they've made it. They've put it all into the seems for the moment at least the Amazon selling store as opposed to a specific Comixology. Website, ah, okay, right. We can kind of browse things relatively. So, easily. if you want, if if you want a new, if you want the latest Batman comic, you have to just go, have to go to Amazon and Google Batman. I honestly go, don't know. Batman I and, don't know at this point. And look, this is why. So, it's my library. Okay, but it's completely fucking random, and it's not everything. It's uh, not in any order. Like, I can't be like, just can I just have like the latest stuff that I've read? Yeah, right. No, I can't get that. Or can I get a specific like the things that I haven't read? That's not really appearing clearly yeah, as well. Right, right. Can I get these grouped into like these right. different? No, I can't. It's, oh, I, I, thought mean, you were gonna, I thought that was going to be a pleasant surprise. Yeah, yeah, yes, I can fine. get them grouped. So it's just, it's awful. Like it's so bad. I cannot believe how badly they fucked this. Seems awful. Yeah. So again, like in this, I mean, I, I do mostly digital, not all, but yeah, because right. it's, it's easier for me and I can yeah. read them the day that they come out. Mm. 
and you know, and so this is obviously my own fault. I've done this to myself. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, because I trusted Amazon to keep some of my comics, I guess. But it's just like, oh my! Why oh, is everything you... still there? Do you know? I don't. I don't know. I can't tell because yeah, right. it's so much. Like it's. I've got thousands of stuff wow. on this. Like I've been using it for maybe close to ten years, maybe. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So anyway, as you can see, I'm <clears throat> very upset about it. Very upset. And fuck you, whoever did that. <laughs> fuck. You to death. Was, Next segment was, of the show. It was me. Oh, oh you're all right, actually. We're friends, so that's Thanks, okay. Man. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's funny if you do it. Yeah, right? It's a fun <laughs> prank. When the reveal comes out, it's a prank. Yeah. It's fun times. Fun times. Uh, yeah. I think it's bad for new creators as well because how do yeah. you find, like, a new interesting thing? I mean, Comics Ollie was has never exactly also been new creator friendly. They do yeah, push yeah. their own stuff in the big brands before. Oh, yeah, yeah. There was still an avenue for it, and I don't know yeah. what that's going to look like now. Maybe there'll be a new thing. Yeah, maybe it'll be way better. Anyway, well, oh no, I meant maybe somebody else will make a better thing. I, yes, please. Yeah. I will jump. I will. I will throw all that in the bin and rebuy it on somebody else's. You know, slowly over time, if I have to. All right then. Oh, we did a big sandwich thing this week. We did uh, in <laughs> clickbait. Oh yes. Speaking of terrible things, yeah. We go through terrible clickbait. Mm. It's a big sandwich dot co. If you do want to sign up, it's our Patreon. How'd you feel about it? I don't like it. I don't like doing it. <laughs> you read a terrible article, and I go. Ugh. Yeah, Everyone else seems to like it, including you. Yeah, I like I'm it. I'm the only one who doesn't like it. That's right. That's yeah. the beauty of it. It's a prank. <laughs> it's a fun prank. <laughs> do you feel better now that you know that it's a prank? No. Yeah. I feel st- I feel like I've been stooged. Yeah, yeah, I stooged you. <laughs> yeah. I've been stooging you for like 100 weeks now. <laughs> All right, what's next, Mason? It's letters. Yay. The classic one was letters, oh, letters, we love you. Right now, we're going to do letters. This is a long-ass show, Mason. Right? Let's do the letters. Okay, let's do some letters. Or we could just end it now if you've had enough. Of letters? I'll yeah. never have enough of letters. That's me too, actually. Mm. Uh, what do you got here? Oh, this is from Paul. Mm-hmm. Regional dispute, Yorkshire puddings. Ooh. Hi, Nick, James, and Meso. Now, it's not, it's not, it's, this, is, this one's very easy to settle. Okay. Uh, I have a regional dispute for you guys to sort out. Uh, is it Duck, Duck, Goose? No, it says, I've always called the oven cooked batter mix served with a roast in a Yorkshire puddings. I live in the UK in Norfolk and there's always been a friendly rival with the neighbouring county, Suffolk. <gasps> I was When I spoke to a friend from Suffolk, I was horrified to learn that some people in Suffolk refer to Yorkshire puddings as batter puddings. I'm still reeling from this revelation. Can you put the world to rights and confirm it is always Yorkshire puddings? Yeah, it is Yorkshire it is. puddings. What, what batter Madness. puddings? That sounds terrible. That's, yuck. Yorkshire? I don't, I don't love the taste of batter. I love the no. taste of Yorkshire. Exactly. God. Batter doesn't sound good in anything. Like batter, this is a battered whatever. I'm like, no. this is bad. I don't like this. Oh, what about a battered cod though? No, uh, yeah, I guess. No, I'd like it. I'd, I'd go grilled. I'd go yeah. grilled fish mostly. Wow, all right. Yeah. Mm. No, that being said, in my house I do eat a lot of fish fingers. Does that count? They're battered, more crumbed. They're more crumbed. Fish fingers are more crumbed, aren't they? Yeah. I'm doing a lot it's of fish okay. fingers. Mm. You've got to get the high quality ones though, don't you? Funny you should say do you? Yes. Or is it what your son doesn't eat? And you're just like, I have some of those. No, he'll eat any kind of fish finger. Kids are kids and fish fingers, mate. Mm. They go together. Here's one summer for you. It's from Adam Ray, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. By the way, if you do want to reach the show, weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com or hashtag Weekly Planet Pod on Twitter. Adam says, in the US, 49 st- states play the game Duck, Duck, Goose. You familiar with this? Yes. For those people who aren't, but you probably are, you sit in a in circle. In that one state. Yeah, it's a kid's playing. game. Where you go around, one person's hit and they go duck, 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 and they touch everybody on the head. And then when they're ready to to pit tag someone, they say goose and they hit yeah. someone on the head. And then they have to run around the circle and get back to that person's spot and sit down before they get caught. And that Otherwise, person's the goose. That's right. And if you get caught, you're the goose. You're again. the goose. Anyways, she goes on to say, whilst us Minnesotans play, uh, whilst oh, sorry, most of the states play that that way, but Minnesotans play duck, duck, grey duck. Hate it. For once and all, please settle which way is the correct way to play this game and why are we why we are the only ones who gets it right. No. No, that's wild. Grey, it's you gotta say goose and then you're off. If you're grey duck. Maybe that adds to too the much challenge time. though. Maybe that adds to the challenge. That's bad. Uh, well, the I'm... idea is because the, the kids you need your head start. Mm. You so you know, because otherwise the kid just it's the same kid. Oh, it's the same kid every time. Just crying and running. Oh, no. The, that sounds like a real grey duck to me. <laughs> wow. Do they not have geese in... in uh... I don't know. That doesn't even sound real, though. That one sounds... That's lunacy, right? Mm. That one sounds fake. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Duck, duck, grey, grey duck. Goose. Grey duck, even. Well, I mean, grey goose is that brand of vodka. It's true. Maybe that's what's going on here. Yeah. No, it is. It's a variation on the game. Duck, duck, grey duck. Grey duck. Hate that. 
I look it to me. It feels like a challenge thing. Yeah, like it's one extra syllable. So it's because w- it's sometimes called a uh, daisy in the dell or quail quail quarry in New Jersey or New England. Okay, Is that a rich person thing. Maybe ooh quail ooh ooh, quail, ooh quarry. That's my mind. Ooh, ooh quail quail caviar. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, because you'd know immediately. Some you'd be like dark dark. And then Gray. he'd be grrr, and you'd be like, that's on you'd get I'm him. You'd get him. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe we're wrong, but actually, we're not wrong. We're not wrong. Yeah. Hey, this is an email from Jeffrey. Hello, Jeffrey. Hey, James and Mason. I was wondering what actor's real voices shock you when you hear it. For me, whenever I hear Henry Cavill's voice, it always catches me off guard because I always think of him with his American accent. It's true. Uh, Christian Bale. Yes. So what's he doing at any one time? Well, that's the thing. And now I'm, he's mostly not. He's no, doing now he's mostly Welsh not doing. It, but I from. guess it's always fascinated me when I is he Welsh or British? I think he's British. I'll look it up. Okay, please look it up. Yeah. Uh, I think he's Welsh. Tom Hardy is a bit like yeah, yeah, but like when Christian Bale, when Christian Bale does interviews in an American accent because his character is American in the movie, yeah, he's English. Yeah. Okay, right. But I don't think he really does that anymore. No, I guess not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess you're going to have to work a bit harder to shock me then, Christian Bale. What about Christopher Nolan? Even though, because we don't like, a, or a Gore of a bit. Is he still? We'll just talk about him. It's fine. Gore, oh right, yeah, 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 yeah. Or like we expected him to be French. I guess we expected him to be French. Yeah, when he's not, apparently. Cavill is a good one because he has the enormous bearing of an American movie star, a cornbread American, but boy. he's not. Yeah, and he's been Superman, obviously, and he's been Superman. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. I think the main thing that he was. Like he'd done Tudors and yeah, right, in, right. he's in Count of Monte Cristo. Yeah. But, yeah, the big thing that he everybody saw was, <laughs> That's right. was Superman, you know? Is he the biggest British man? He's not. I don't think he's super tall, but he might be one of the buffest. Yeah, I think he might cinema, be the one. Yeah, yeah. He's I one of the say. buffest British men no, in like, cinema. like Bale was very big well, for true. a time, you know? Yeah, so that's true. Think of that. Who else am I think? You know, you know who? Kevin from The Office. Oh, right. I mean, What's... I know he doesn't talk like that. He wouldn't. But hearing him talk normally. Yeah, right. Because he can, because he hasn't yeah. been hit in the head. Mm. It's, it's very strange. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, I had one and I lost it. Mark Wahlberg? No, not Mark Wahlberg. Tom Holland? No. Tom Holland. We didn't even do his voice. People probably get upset. <laughs> it's true. People love it when we do that voice, I think. What an adventure. Yeah. Uh Oh, it'll come to me later. No, so the one. Stick, no, let's you stick. mean like after the show? Yeah, after the show. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should type in like actors with surprising accents or whatever. Yeah. I mean, you know, Andrew Garfield's British, but I think everyone knows that at That's this true, point, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Um, oh, the one that I was thinking of yeah. is the opposite. It's Sam Neill in the Jurassic Park. Oh, movies. yeah. Because I keep, I'm like, oh. I mean, he, yeah, because he, and also he barely that, does an American accent in that. Like but it's, it's in very, the new one. It's huge, I feel. Oh, like. is in it? In the trailer for the new one, it's like, he's like, I'm like, damn, that's Howdy, so American. I'm Sam Neill. Exactly. I mean, Al Lone Grant. <laughs> Yeehaw. <laughs> hey, old <old-y>. day. <laughs> I love dinosaurs. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> Yar. Anyway, does it always- Nature <laughs> find a way. <laughs> Invisible Is that bill- one of his lines? <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. Might be the other guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Invisible Billboard competitive ad rate says. <clears throat> oh, that's nice. Hashtag Week with Pod. Since it's Disney, I can't, I can't imagine they're going to come out, uh, out and say the famous Moon Knight line, you know, the Dracula and whatever. Sure, yeah, yeah. But uh, fuck you, Dracula, where's my money or whatever. But do you think they're going to be a reference to Dracula owing him money in the upcoming series? I mean, yes, we have made. We, I mean, that is a that is a Photoshop panel. Yes, but uh, do you think know. they'll reference it? Yeah, maybe. Mm, mm. No, mm, no, I don't think they will. I think because it's very, apparently it's very serious. But yeah, that's kind of. They said that before, and then like this isn't actually very serious. Yeah. So I don't know. Mm. I I agree. I say no. No, you know what? You say, I'll say yes, and then Whoa. one of us will be right. One of us will be right. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Hope it's me though. What else you got for letters? Great question. Actors with surprising accents. Sense. Let me find out what's going on here. 20 actors you didn't realise had accents. Whoa. Oh, yeah, the dude from um, The Walking Dead, Rick, he's British. Oh. But I always knew that, so that's prob- but that probably is mm. surprising to some. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, Tony Collette, I guess. Oh, KJ uh, Apa, who plays Archie in Riverdale. Oh, where's he from? He's Aussie. Ooh. Yeah. Kangaroo Jack. Catherine Langford is Australian. Kangaroo Jack Apa. That's yes. his name. <laughs> Catherine Langford, you know her from like 13 Reasons Why? She's Australian. Did you know that? Oh. I, didn't, fuck, I didn't know that. This is cra- I haven't even heard her voice. I didn't know that. Yeah. What so else? She's got like 75 million followers on Instagram. I oh, so do I. And <laughs> it's great. 
That's great. Thanks, man. Mm. This is from uh, Liam. Okay, Liam. Last email from Liam. The last email ever. Yeah. We'll miss you, this Liam. Is a, no, this is the last email for the podcast. Not for me. I've got a tweet, though. i got a tweet. Okay, yeah. well, that's, that's a difference. Simon Baker. It's I know a different thing. Simon Baker It's a different is. thing. Dear James and Nick, but more especially just Nick. What? been listening to your podcast every week for about the last two years. I uh, loved it so much that I decided to show an episode to my at-the-time girlfriend who loved it as well and listened to it on her own. Oh. Sadly, things didn't work out between us and we broke up. A few months ago, I found out she has a new boyfriend and his name was Nick Mason. What? I'm assuming it's not the same person as we both live in the United States, but I made myself laugh a few times about how Nick Mason stole my girlfriend. In all seriousness, love the podcast and the work you guys put into it. I work the overnight shift at work and lots of times to help me stay awake. I will listen to old episodes and love the banter you guys have. Keep up the good job and I will be careful about who I share your podcast with next. Please do. Sincerely, Liam. Yes. uh, Also, we need to come clear here. I'm dating your girlfriend. It was me. It's not oh, actually you, Nick Mason. Why aren't yeah. you using a fake I'm using name? Your, I'm using your oh, that's, idea, yeah. That's a fun prank. I think I'd so. I'd be mad, but you, we're friends and that's a prank. <laughs> so I'm actually happy about the thing that you've said. So, uh, well, you seem to be in good spirits about yeah. it, doesn't you? So that's good. Mm. good Shout good out to you. one of my fellow working late fellows. Why is he working so late? It's a great, great question. I work the overnight shift at work, so there's a day wow. shift as well. Who knows? Probably Probably fighting vampires. Fighting vampires, you Day reckon? shift. You want that I day shift. I would sh- love the day shift. Yeah, right? You just stake them when they're asleep. Yes. Just flip over from the – well, even just tip the coffin over. <laughs> the coffin. They're like, what the fuck? And they're Man. Like, stop. And then stop you stake them. God. Them, they burn up in the fire. And they're, the, the, they're like, God, ow. God, ooh. God, ooh. Ow, oh, no. Oh, Jesus. Ooh. ooh. <laughs> it's from um, Nate Harris who says, oh, hashtag weekly plan plot. Just listen to, re-listen to episode one. Right, and uh, okay. how'd that go? Yeah, we just episode oh one. Uh, no, it says from but October eighteenth, twenty twenty. So I don't know what's going on there. Let's say it's October twenty twenty. We discussed Toby Andrew joining No Way Home. You said you'd be disappointed if they weren't in it the whole time. Uh, a la Spider Verse. How with how the movie turned out, are you actually disappointed? No, not at all. That, they were in it plenty. Mm. I thought. What did you think? I think that's more directed to me specifically. Yeah, but... I thought that. I thought they were in the, the perfect amount of time. I agree. Mm. And that's mm. that's how I changed my mind, I think. Yeah. This one's from – oh, no, I did that one. And I've done them all. That's all my tweets, Mason. You did it. Hooray, hey, what's next? Or have you reading an email? i got right one now? more email. Right, this is from Greg. It. says, the pod got me through alcohol withdrawal. Whoa. Dear James, and Mason, 34 days ago I made the huge and hopefully final decision to give up alcohol after a lifetime of addiction. Hell I yeah. listened to old episodes of the pod for 40 hours straight, filled with insomnia, vomiting, and inability to eat or drink water, and delirium. Something about your soothing Aussie voices – and friendly banter got me through the darkest chapter of my life. I want to say thank you. And besides the entertainment, I don't think you guys realise how deeply you positively affect your listeners. Can I be the new? Can I be the newly sober soppy bollocks of the show <laughs> from Greg? Thank you so much, Greg. Yeah. And congratulations, Greg. Two great things going on there. We were the soundtrack, but I think you did the mostly getting off the alcohol. Me? Thing. No, not you. Well, I mean, I started the show. It was my idea initially. Oh, that's, a, that's so, true, actually. Know, yeah, that is I'm true. I'm happy to yeah. take some, if not all, of the credit yeah, for this. Yeah, no, that's a good idea, actually. No, good for you, man. That sounds also absolutely brutal. Mm. Effing brutal, even, if you don't Effing mind brutal. me saying so. But, um, man, good for you. Yeah. And I'm glad we helped in some way. And also, I hope you don't have negative associations with the podcast because of your experience. Oh, that happens sometimes. You know when you eat a bit of food that you love and then maybe you get sick later and you're like, yeah. oh, no, now I can never eat. Yeah. You know what? When thing, I, fish fingers. The last time, I had, last time I had kidney stones, I was like, you know what will soothe me? A big bag of this particular type of chips and I ate the chips and I'm like, now I hate them. What kind of particular chip was it? Like this? a ter- ter- turmeric and cheese chip. Oh. But I've got a bag but of home. you say turnip? A turnip, a turnip and cheese turnip. chip. My my favourites, James. The turnip and cheese. That's a prank, and I but I don't like it. <laughs> I don't care for friends. Yeah, but I got a bag at home, and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna see how we go. See how we go. Last time you had kidney stones. Ah, oh, a long time. Are you drinking enough water? Yes. Are you on some kind of special kidney stone breaking down medication? Yeah, tiny it? hammers. Tiny hammers. <laughs> little working men. I play them like a little play play my tum like a little xylophone with some tiny. Is hammers. this something you can do, or is it just like drink? No, more it's just water. drink a lot of water. Yeah, and some people are susceptible. Is that some people right? more susceptible? Yeah, cool. That's cool. Yeah. See, I can never get gallstones again. That was my thing. We both had stones because I got you, mine removed. Nice. So if you just get whatever kidney stones. Oh, kidneys, my kidneys, kidneys out. Removed, get my kidneys fine, out. Yeah, 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 that's cool. It'd be absolutely. Or I could get them, I could get like maybe an adapter put in yeah. and I can unplug them, rinse them out under the tap, put them back in. Oh, that would probably work, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very good. Mm. Well, I'm glad you haven't had kidney stones in a while, Mason. Me too. And you're also glad I haven't had gallstones since I got my gallbladder out. And then, that'd be funny if you did still though. No, it wouldn't. That would be not funny, actually. <laughs> I don't care if we're friends. That's a mean thing to say. <laughs> Sorry, James, you've got gallstones. 
on your face. What? Yeah, that's right. I should have asked him to see him. I wanted to see him. Yeah. Fuck. Anyway. Wouldn't no. they be like teeny weeny? No, no, they were big. Oh. I, my, mine, my gallbladder probably hadn't worked in like 10 years. Oh, no. It was fucked. It was a bag of marbles, mate. Oh, no. It was <laughs> cactus. Wow. Which is why I think... I didn't really change when it, like, my body emotionally, didn't change. yeah, emotionally. But like, some people report feeling like different. Although, well, when your husband gets yeah. his gallbladder out, he'll be, he'll be much less cranky. It happens all the time. Don't even worry about it. It'll be, <laughs> but the, it's like after a dog gets fixed. I <laughs> mean, in but, a much better mood. But like, their dog, oh no, he's still raging. He's, he's, this so, dude's he's, still he's raging. Meaner. <laughs> Well, like, I think you're supposed to let like, your digestion change, but I think ah. because my nip hadn't worked in so long, all right. Just, Huh. Just the same. Yeah, well. Anyways, what's let's wrap the show up, Mason. Okay, folks. Thank Enough about my gallbladder. No, but yeah. I mean, maybe we'll do a bonus podcast on our various stones and bladders. <laughs> so our stones and bladders, stones the podcast. And, <laughs> stones and bladder boys. Ah, folks, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. Thank you for telling your friends about it because that's how we get other people to listen. That's right. That's how the audience grows. That's true. That's so true. It is very true. Yeah. Tell one friend this week. Give it a whirl. I agree. You know. I agree. And if you've told that friend before and they didn't listen, you tell them again. You, you say, know. listen, the theme song sucks. It's not sucks, Buster. But he's going to change it yeah, one at day. the start of next year. Yeah. That's right, I am. You've got a million more listeners will change it. No, I'm going to change it regardless. Whoa. I am changing it. And you're getting rid of saying Westworld? No, that's that's when Westworld starts. <laughs> okay, great. But also I have to watch Westworld. So that's if true. I never watch it, oh, I sneaky. can keep doing it. Yeah. Sneaky deaky. Uh, folks, thank you for subscribing. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. For leaving a five star review, James, you got any there? Just bringing those up right now. Actually, and this one says this is from Sony Boy sixty six. He says, "Good show, five stars." And then it just says, "Good show." It's as nice. Simple as that. If you want to work, if you want to work out, if you want to help out, this one's from I'm so. You want to work out? You want to help out? Yeah, do it. You can do both. This one's directed at you, Mason. Oh, it's good podcast mostly. Oh, good post podcast except for the fact Mason thinks Turok is a valiant character. Kind of embarrassing, if I'm honest. Totally breaks the character, and now I can't imagine myself as Mason in the show anymore. So is, he's go. a gold key character? I couldn't tell you. Okay, I wouldn't. Well. I, I wouldn't want to commit to anything. I don't want to upset this person. Wow, because he's an acclaim character, acclaim comics. I don't know, Mason. I'm going to look it up right now. Why don't you? But in the meantime, yeah. While you're looking that up, uh, you want me to look it up while you're. Yes. In the meantime, it. folks, thank you for those reviews. Yeah. If you want to get into contact with us, you can go to Weekly Planet Pod at Gmail at Twitter at Facebook at Bandcamp. You can go to the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates. Facebook group. You can go to the Weekly Planet Pod Discord and subreddit. You can have fun at pop culture and podcast chats with all types of folks. I agree. Uh, you can follow me on a Twitter at Wikipedia Brown and on Instagram at Nick Maso, N I C K M A S E A U. James is Mr. Sunday Movies everywhere. You can also follow the great yep. Rob Collins who edits this podcast. Wow. He makes all sorts of crazy videos. He made a video for a Book of Boba Fett it's up on the, on the Mr. Sunday Movies YouTube channel. Uh, that's terrific. And all sorts of videos. He didn't even have to do it. He's just like, do you want this? And I'm like, yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you can follow him at The Weekly Planet on Twitter and at Raw Collings on Twitter. If you want to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies. You chuck in a buck or One any amount. One, One dollar, any amount you wouldn't miss. You, you, you dropped it uh, behind the couch, rolled behind the fridge, rolled into an over an overpass. Give us that. Under dollar. an underpass, rolled into the traffic, and you're like, I'd get that, but I'd be hit by 17 get cars. It, get it, then give it to us. Oh, no. Yeah. No, no, the amount you wouldn't miss, that's the the correct amount to uh, to, to donate exactly. to us. But if you're a big, big, big time, big spender. If you're a big spender. Bigsandwich.co, you can go there, you can sign up for nine US dollars per month. Yep. And you get bonus podcasts and uh, movie commentaries movie com- and early videos and all sorts Batman of stuff. Batman 66. Oh, my God, yes, please. There's thousands of hours of content up yes, there. There's like stuff a- that's not out else places. Right, exactly. And this actually goes up a day early there. Whoa. I know. Did you know that? Yes. Well, yeah, yes, but now, you, now you really know, though. Uh, Turok first appeared in American comic books published by Western Publishing through licensee Dell Comics. Dell? Like the computer? Wow. Uh, I think it's probably unrelated. Adele? Uh, okay, there, yeah, Dell. Adele Comics. It's Adele. She's like, hello. Hello. I'm doing comic. I love Turok more than anything. I made Turok in the 90s. My first album's about Turok. <laughs> Is he 12, a, 12 songs about Turok. It was mostly me figuring out if he's a time traveller or he's a modern day and dinosaurs have reappeared. Mm. What did that end up being? I never listened to that album. 
He first appeared in four colour comics, 1954, after a second four colour appearance. The character graduated to his own title, Torok Son of Stone, published by both Dell and then Gold Key Comics. From 1956 to 1982, subsequently appeared in titles published by Valiant Comics, Diagos Comics and Dynamo Comics. But is he from the past or is he a dinosaur man in the past? Well, there's, more, he... than, there's more than one Turok. Well, it's original he's like a He's like a family, it's a family line. A family of rocks. But it's like, he, he, it's like present. So there was one rock and there was two rock. <laughs> Correct, yes. And then yes, I think James. there was one rock again. Because was what, was this I'm going to tip this table. Is this joke working? No, I'm going to tip the table because how bad is this it's joke not. working? No, that's why I'm going to tip the table. Tipping the table is good, though, isn't it? I'll uh, really tip the tables on this one. Oh yes, is please. That right? Yeah, uh, no, there's, there's, uh, he's, he's a modern day guy, basically. Okay. Yeah, the the, the so dinosaur. He, he has an apartment. I just want to know. He yeah, has a nice he does. Apartment. He actually okay. does. Uh, and the dinosaurs are dino- dinosaurids. They're from, oh yeah, they're from they're space, from or space or something, or, or another dimension. I don't know. That sucks. Imagine yeah. that. Oh man, imagine if dinosaurs turned up. Right. No, thank you. You'd be like, no, thank you, man. I wish was the, this was the Dino Riders universe. I'd say to nobody. That's right. As I'm being eaten <laughs> by <a> dinosaurs. <laughs> as you're being enslaved by the dinosaurs, <laughs> forced to work in their space mines. You're like, boy, I wish this was the Dino Riders universe. Shut up. <laughs> 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 oh boy. <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> anyway, you know, you know, in the uh, that you know that sitcom dinosaurs, they all died at the end because of a meteor coming. Yeah, that's coming right. Down. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Quiet with your dinosaur facts. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. folks, uh, thank you to the Brit and the Basilisk can rack and for all these musical themes. Yeah. We've got t-shirts at tpublic dot com. You just search for the Weekly Planet, grab a weird one. We why do. not? Give it, give it a whirl. Take a photo. Send it to us. We love it. I, I don't uh, – yeah, so next week I don't know what we're doing. I am actually seeing Batman on Friday. Oh. But just me and not you. <laughs> you specified. It was weird. They're like, you want two tickets? I, they, I couldn't. They were like – Whoa. Yeah. So I don't know what we're doing next week other than that. But um, you, you, What are you having, a bloody no-mate special? Yeah, I'm having a no-mate special. But will it be when, – when is it coming out everywhere else? The following week. Oh. I think something's out next week. I want what say. you could do – what we could do is we could do a review where you could review it and I could critique your review. I don't know if I'm allowed to, actually. Oh, I don't then, think I'm allowed okay. to say anything. Whoa. I don't know. Because it's bad? Is that what the ticket says? No, I think You're not allowed to say anything because the movie's bad? I think it's probably good. Yes, I think that also. Because they've, they're showing it to a bunch of people. I hmm. think. I don't know. <laughs> don't know. Yeah. Maybe we'll do Nightmare Alley. Maybe we'll go and all see Scream. Maybe we'll see Spencer. Maybe we'll see Adam's Family too. Oh, you know what? Could be the Snake Eyes week. Oh yeah, we, we were didn't. Yeah, to do yeah, this yeah, we're week. gonna do this week. It's actually the perfect week for. Yeah, we can guys. do something. There's a, just the gap in there. Yeah, barring anything else, just popping up. Yep. We can see Snake Eyes. We'll I talk agree. about Snake Eyes. I we'll agree. See, we've seen Snake Eyes. We'll continue. It's to... obviously on Paramount I'll watch Plus. It again. And if you've seen it, watch it again. If you haven't seen it, watch it for the first time. That's right. Because I'm tell you what. If you ask me, every time I watch it, it's like watching it for the first time. Me too. Because it's magical. Because it's yeah, it feels like <laughs> that, isn't it? And I flip the table. Enjoy. That's the stuff. Goodbye, everybody. Grab that gem, you guys. We will see you next week. Goodbye. Bye. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you.